The following is a presentation of the Olsh Sports Network. Gentlemen, to Moon Tiger Stadium, Ripshire Field. It's week. What is it? Week eight. Actually, week nine. Week. Because we have week zero. Week. So that's right. Week nine. Yep, yeah. Yep. Numbers confuse me. That's okay. It's week nine on the Olsh, as the Olsh Chargers are hosting the Bishop Canavan Crusaders in Pink Out Night here at Moon Tiger Stadium. Greetings, everybody. I'm Al Esch. I have Marty Armstrong alongside tonight in the booth. We're up here nice and dry. Should be raining on and off tonight, Marty, but that's not going to dampen the, the atmosphere in this one. It's pink out night. It's the Bishop Canavan Crusaders come in, and uh, the Chargers looking to uh, pull the big upset tonight. Yeah, El uh, Catholic Bowl 23, here we go. So, you know, basically the Bishop Canavan Crusaders are on a roll, and the Chargers look very impressive last week's win on the road. Finally got the monkey off the back, if you will. So, yeah, they're, they're in a the pack right there um, in playoff contention with Cornell, Bergestein, and Olsch for that final spot, El. So, again, Bish Bishop comes in, you know, they're riding high. And I'm going to tell you, Olsh is here to knock the chip off their shoulders. I think it might be they can just do that tonight, the way these kids were talking pregame was down on the field. Yeah, again, we talked about it since basically since the first week when all the injuries started with the Chargers. Yeah. you got to admire the heart that these kids have been putting out there on the field. The, the coaching staff hasn't given up on them, letting them go out there and play. And the Chargers, they put it all on the field. And at the end of each game, they drag themselves off as they leave nothing on the field and uh, put it on the line every week, despite the odds that have been against them all week. Yeah, for sure, Al. If you could imagine this. Imagine if the Steelers lost Kenny Pickett, George Pickens, Dante Johnson, Micah Fitzpatrick, Pat Pete, and T.J. Watt. That's a similar as we have here tonight. You know, think about that because these guys play both sides of the ball. Mm -hmm. You're missing that caliber of teams, uh, excuse me, players. So with that said, L, yeah, that's, you know, they have a tough, ta a tough task in hand with the Crusaders. They have 43 kids. <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, plethora of talent I see on the field. Yes. But, but like I said, Ulster's home. They're revved up and ready to go here tonight. There's no question. Well, you can see the graphic there. The Chargers come in with a record of four and four. They are three and two in section. As you said, Marty, they're fighting with Burgettstown right now for that final playoff spot in the big, uh, the, the Black Hills Conference. The Crusaders come in really in second place with a six and one record. They're four and one in the section. Their only loss is to the, the section leading Fort Cherry uh, Rangers. And uh, the Chargers lost to these same Crusaders last year by score 40 to nothing down in Dormont and they're looking to return the favor here tonight. Yeah, they really are and uh, you know put this also in perspective El, you know with Bargatstein, go figure, we held them close at best 19-13 I think the final score was whatever it may be. Cornell did the same with Bargatstein, they beat them by one point at the end so you know on paper yeah it looks real so tonight these kids are riding high um, last home game of their career, some of these seniors. Yep. And it's an it's, it's unbelievable atmosphere tonight, and I think everyone's looking forward to this game. You talk about the uh, last home game for some of these seniors. Um, and, well, I was talking to uh, Coach Militzer again this week, and, and uh, he touched on a little bit of that too in our, in our little chat yesterday afternoon. And uh, I'll, I'll let you hear what he had to say. Yeah, we talked about last week, we talked about this week, and like I said, some of the seniors and what, what, what's happening with them. So here we go. Here's Coach Militzer uh, talking about his Charger team. Welcome to Charger pregame. And it's week eight. Chargers taking on the Bishop Canavan Crusaders coach. Uh, great win last week down at the Vela. Feisty uh, Eagles team. Uh, you were able to come away with a victory. 
Yeah, I think people forget that Avella was three and four coming into that game, and you know I think they're a good football team, and they're one of those teams in single A. Depending on the conference that they're in, they probably would you know really compete for a playoff spot. You know, um, so you know they didn't give up, but our kids never gave up. I mean, really, and and you know we just the way I, we you know dug deep and uh, fought. I mean, it was one of the best wins I've had in my two years here, just because of everything we've been through and like I told the boys it puts us you know no matter what happens this week we're strictly in the playoff race right now and, uh, to say that after all we've been through this year is it's it's pretty darn exciting yeah you come off off that win and, and now you got a tough tough game against the Crusaders uh, they're up on top of the standing well four cherries on top but uh, they only have one loss in the season with their reputation um, you've got to have some kind of game plan intact in for them well, I think anytime you play a good football team, and that's what Bishop Canavan is, uh, you know, you got to limit your mistakes, limit your turnovers, and control the clock. I mean, so that's kind of going to be our, our philosophy tonight. I think our running game has really uh, taken over since Brandon's came back. I mean, uh, getting him back and, and our line really getting comfortable. I mean, kudos to those five kids. I mean, you know, they a couple of them have had to miss some time here and there, but for the most part, uh, those five have played all year, played together all year, and. and uh, you know, just giving us everything they had, and it's really starting to benefit. You saw that last week, and they pretty much dominated both sides of the football up front. Uh, you know, they're conf they're a confident group. I mean, talking to them today, I mean, they're they're excited about the opportunity tonight. They feel it's an opportunity to establish themselves yet again, uh, and they know that the game's going to be on them. You know, with based on what Canavan has, this isn't a team you really want to put the ball up in the air a bunch of times with the athletes they have. So. You know, we're going to go out tonight and just try to play a physical game, limit our mistakes, uh, run some clock, and, you know, who knows? I mean, these kind of games, we don't know what the weather's going to be like, and, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, and it's I told the kids today, I mean, realistically, we're in a similar spot to, as we were last year. If you win this game, it puts you in a really, really good spot. Uh, even if you don't win this game, it comes down to Cornell again. So it's kind of, you know, again, we're just – couldn't, I couldn't be happier and prouder of this group of guys to be in the situation that we're in because this could have went south real quick with everything that's happening. Good point. Uh, again, this is Charger pregame. Coach Don Militzer with us uh, here tonight. And uh, let's let's talk about some good stuff that's happening with the team. I, I noticed some uh, some offers coming in for some of the seniors. Yeah, well deserved. Yeah. You know, uh, I think we've got a lot of guys getting a lot of interest, and, and I think there's more to come. Uh, but this week, you know, Brandon and Brady Brazell got an offer from St. Vincent's, and Damari got one from Westminster. Uh, we're getting a ton of calls on Cam Branch. Uh, he's been playing at a high level, and, you know, even uh, through injuries, people are extremely interested in Darion and Dorian. And, you know, so I think it's going to be fun. You know, that really picks up tremendously this time of year, and uh, November and December are big for that. So I think it's gonna, you're going to see uh, a lot of uh, – a lot of Chargers playing football at the next level, which is exciting for us and exciting for those kids. I mean, that's as a coach, you want to put these kids in position to do to go beyond here and, and be prepared for that. And so, seeing that is pretty exciting. And definitely, when you see the Brazels getting in, I mean, you've seen them play for four years out. You know what kind of competitors they are. So, any college that gets those two is they're getting they're, they're getting some pretty some pretty good football <laughs> players and, and just great kids in the community. I mean, anybody at the school will tell you. Uh, with great kids they are in the school. I have to ask, he brought his name up, Brandon Brazell. He stepped into the quarterback role here for the Chargers, and, and wow, he, he's uh, turning some heads and opening some eyes. Uh, who would have thought he'd have been a quarterback? And he's, he's turned out to be quite the quarterback. Brandon's not a quarterback or running back. He's a football player, yeah. you know, and, and that's – Brandon's your ultimate football player, and Brady's the same way. I could literally put those kids at center, guard, running back, tackle, quarterback, and they ball out. I mean, they're, they're football players. Uh, they're two of the kids that I, I, I'm hoping we get a playoff run just because I don't, I'm going to miss them. So they're two of the kids that you want to keep playing. But, yeah, Brandon's been fantastic, and I look at the play at the end of the half there. Having the, I had the confidence in him at the end of the half to say, seven seconds left. If you don't, all you have to do here is don't get sacked. But here's what I see. If you make this throw, we score a touchdown. And sure enough, he stands in there and makes a great throw. And we're in the end zone. I mean, huge, huge play. And, you know, it just, but again, it has nothing to do with being a quarterback, running back, tight end, whatever. The, the kid's just a football player. And I think that's what I tell colleges when they call. Like, you're getting a football player. You're getting a leader. You're getting, you're getting two football players. 
You're getting two leaders, you're getting two amazing young men. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're hot commodities here in the next few weeks. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Again, it's the Bishop Canavan Crusaders and the Chargers tonight. It's going to be a wet field, but it should be fun. Kickoff is right after this. Don't go away. And welcome back to Moon Tiger Stadium. It's William Ripshear Field here in Moon Township, home of the Our Lady of the Sacred Heart Chargers, hosting the Bishop Canavan Crusaders tonight. And first off, we do want to thank our football uh, sponsors. That would be Doughboy's Oven Fresh Pizza. Order online at D-O-U-G-H-B-O-Y-S-P-G-H.com. That's Doughboy's Pittsburgh. Dot com, or you can call them at 412-771-1030. We'd like to thank International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 712. Also, we'd like to thank uh, Los Sego Automotive Sales and Service. Call them at 412-276-6244. And we have the national anthem. We'll listen in. All right. Continuing with our sponsors, wanted to thank them. It would be, a next, like I said, Las Ego Automotive Sales and Service. Call them at 412-276-6244. We'd like to thank Trim Pittsburgh, a shop for men, located in Lawrenceville and coming to Ross Park Mall this fall. Also, we'd like to thank Brewer Airport Toyota, Western Pennsylvania's number one volume Toyota dealer. Keep Brewer Airport Toyota in mind and like them on Facebook. Learn more at BrewerAirportToyota.com. I'd like to have a little shout out tonight for one of my bosses, old bosses, Bernie Warner and his wife, Suzanne, up Moon Township. Listen tonight, now they're a big fan. So All right. hello and, and uh, welcome into the broadcast. Yeah, it looks like it's going to rain here in a little bit. I'm looking at the radar, <laughs> and uh, they're saying maybe in about 20 minutes it's going to let it down poor. But you're on turf. It's not really going to hurt anybody. Uh, I think we talked about it pregame. Let's let it rain when Bishop Canavan has the ball. Well, yeah, you, 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 if it hurts anything, it's going to hurt the aerial attack. 100%. More than, more than the ground game. So, And uh, Canavan likes to throw the ball, so uh, look for that. Um, it, I talked to Don Militzer this week like i said and he's got a little couple surprises for the crusaders tonight we'll see if that has an effect uh changing things up a little change of pace for the chargers and see if that helps any yeah i think the keys of this game tonight actually is our defense obviously you know you want to put a stop to the run game carter and uh, oshevsky the quarterback and try to contain you know, Cross and, and Marshall and all those uh, guys, they have a great uh, rod receiver core over at Bishop Canavan. But like we talked out L on the way down here tonight on the trip here, we said, hey, you know, you hold the ball, you're tuning up the clock, you know, the Chargers it is on offense. Let Brandon run the ball, turn it up. If you can do that, then we have a better chance of winning this game and to keep, keeping their offense off the field, obviously. Right. Uh, that's that was uh, that was the coaching staff of the Chargers' uh, game plan for tonight was would be to uh, uh, ball possession. Keep the ball. If, if if we got the ball, they can't score. Was the, sure. was the philosophy. So yeah. There you see the captains meeting out there for the Chargers. It's Branch, Brazel, Brazel, and uh, Hatherley. 
for the Chargers. All the uh, Brazilians are in the house tonight. We got Bobby running the camera. <laughs> but yeah. Bob Senior doing stats. And obviously Brady Haas, Brazil, and uh, Brandon Milk Truck, Brazil, <laughs> on the field. And uh, congratulations <laughs> to them. They got a, a, a actually a letter of content from uh, St. Vincent's. Is that right, Dale? That, you know, say come and play for them? Yeah, I think the Brazils, uh, yeah, we, uh, Coach talked about it in the pregame. The um, Chargers starting to get some offers. This is the season where you start to get offers, and some yeah. of the seniors are starting to get them. And the Brazil boys had their first offer from St. Vincent, and um, uh, Damari Bruff uh, got his from uh, Winchester. That's awesome. So, And uh, he said he's getting calls on pretty much all the seniors, uh, the Charger. Um, Don Militzer said, so uh, look for more to come. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, definitely a talented uh, old Charger team. And, um, you know, Don does a great job with these guys. And, uh, you know, on the other side of the field, it was fourth season for the uh, Crusaders. Took them to uh, Accusure Stadium last year where they got knocked off by Union 26 nothing. All new this year, obviously, new talent, new team. So here we go, getting ready for kickoff, as you see on your screen. Yeah, the Crusaders actually did not lose that many players. They only lost a few. Yeah. So they, they basically uh, – filled in a couple spots and here they go this is basically the same team of last year minus i think two or three players basically well they had cross last year a quarterback and, yeah and then osheski they uh, kind of like yeah they, they flip-flop yeah yep so here we go yeah cross has settled into that uh h-back wide out position and here we go patty uh, altmar will tee it up on the 40 yard line kicking off to the crusaders we are underway it's a squib kick they'll kick it and it's going to go out of bounds the crusaders will get it at their 35 yard line first and 10. All right. So, again, it's contained. Osheski, like we talked earlier, you know, you, you put some pressure on him. He has happy feet, and uh, he will he will get flushed out of the pocket. He gets a little nervous. So, let's see what happens. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, is, is the, uh, the end rushers need to contain and not let him get out, and we need to, we need to be covering cross primarily. Yeah. But uh, you got to watch out for Melvin as well on the outside. It's Carter in the backfield with Oshesky. Coming in motion is Cross. He's going to get the little shovel pass, and they contain him. And he's going to get to the 35. He's going to fall forward to the 37-yard line for two yards. It'll be second and eight for the Crusaders. Nice tackle by Isaiah Schultz right there on the tackle to lead the Chargers' way. So, you know, they contained him so far, so that was a nice little – Little tackle there, L. Yeah, they contain him and then just give Cross credit for falling forward for the yardage. They actually hit him in the backfield. Yeah. Look for a big game from Cam Branch. Oh, he was lights out last week in Avella, you know, clogging that, that middle up, and he does a great job. That, that whole front was, and, and you see something different already from the Chargers. They got a three-man front yeah. against the Crusaders. Um, Playing the 3-5. First time they've showed that this year. So the Crusaders seeing a new look for the Chargers defense. Lashevsky in the backfield. And we have a we have a flag. I believe there's, that defense may have caused Oshevsky to cause a delay a game. That's what it was. He sure did. Push him back. Five yards. Make it second and 13 for the Crusaders from their 32. It's They pitch it back. Hit in the backfield oh at the 30-yard line and smothered there was uh, Marshall. Never got to the line of scrimmage. A loss of two. It's going to be third and 15 for the Crusaders from their own 30-yard line. And number 21, Mr. Veterino on the tackle. Luke, what a great containment right there, Al, and let him go on the outside. He said, uh-uh, you're not going nowhere. So, so far, so good. Two, two times uh, the ball carrier has gotten hit, as you said, Marty, behind the, the line of scrimmage. So this is what the Chargers need to do. Trips to the near side for the Crusaders. Shevsky looking to throw. Here comes the pressure, and down oh goes Oshevsky. Back at the 20-yard line. The Chargers push him all the way back to the 20. It's going to be fourth down and forever for the Crusaders. 
And one more time, look who led the charge out was Luke Federino on the tackle, coming over on the left side. Said, uh-uh. Nice sack right there by Vetterino, playing his mind out right now. They're going to mark him down at the 22-yard line. It'll be fourth and about 23. Back to punt. His knee was down. It sure was. His knee was down, and they are marking him down. It's going to be four, first and goal for the Chargers at the eight-yard line for the Chargers. He sure was, though. He went down. His knee went down. He says, uh-oh, and there we are. So Chargers up in a gold zone. Here we go. First possession. They got first and goal. Where are they going to mark him? I thought he was inside the 10. I thought it was at the eight-yard line myself. Let's see. Pretty sure it was the eight. And that's where the official's marking him. Yeah. At the, yeah, the ball hadn't gotten put down yet. Looked like the eight and a half. Yeah, he's standing at the eight yard line. First and goal for the Chargers from the eight yard line. Brazell in the backfield for the Chargers. Brother Brady, Haas, Haas. in the backfield with him. <laughs> Milk truck and Haas. Trips to the near side for the Chargers. Brazell hands it off to Brady. Brady up the middle, he's at the five. Still pushing the pow. And they're going to mark him at the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal from the five. Pick up a three for Brady Brazell. Brady just kept turning his legs out. He says, okay, I'm, I'm trying to fight down through here. So, uh, yeah, nice pick up on the first drive. First run, I should say. Nothing fancy. No. Keep it between the tackles. That's right. Vanilla football. Approaching nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. Trips to the near side. Same setup. Brazell is going to keep it himself. Brandon inside the five into the two and gets pushed back. They're going to mark uh, maybe at the three-yard line. We'll see where they mark him. It'll be third and goal from inside the five for the Chargers. They're going to mark yeah. him at the three. Yeah, oh, he ran right over the left tackle. I said, okay, he got a hole there, and then it just it closed quickly. So, hey. Brandon comes to the near sideline for the play from Coach Militer. He threw a nice pass last week, Al, oh, to Talon, to Talon. in the corner. I want to reason to do the same, but see what happens. It's been all on the ground for the first two plays for the Chargers. Talon is split out wide to the far side. Speedy in motion. It's Brazell up the middle. He's got the two. Pushing to the one. He's up close to the goal line. They're going to mark him down inside the one-yard line. It's going to be third and goal, or excuse me, fourth and goal for the Chargers. Got to go for this. I oh, would, you, I have would, you have to. You have to right here. They're going to mark him at the one-yard line. Fourth and one. Under eight minutes to go here for the Chargers. They're going to do the brotherly shove, you think? <laughs> so let's see what happens here. So far, they're winning the line of scrimmage. They sure are, Elder, pushing them back. Yeah, one thing about the Chargers, Elder, very talented on that O-line. That line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spreading them out. Twins to either side. The Brazels in the backfield. Now he goes up under center, Brandon does. And here comes the push. Brady pushing, pushing, pushing. And he is... No signal yet. He's, He's in the in. end zone. Brandon Brazell pushes it in, and the Chargers are on top. Six nothing. There it is, Alex. We called it. Just push that line and let Brandon do the work. So 7-3 of the first quarter. Your Chargers are surprising the Bishop Canavan Crusaders. Six nothing. Six nothing with 7-0-3 left in the first. Chargers take advantage of miscues by the Crusaders. Patty. Altmar comes in to attempt the extra point. Oh, he needs a little bit of momentum, Mel. It's all you need. That's it. Brandon Brazell will do the holding duties. Snaps back. It's down. It's up. And it is through the uprights. And the Chargers, just like that, have a 7-0 lead with 7.03 left here in the first. You kind of needed that, Al. You needed that little you know, something different, you know, any given Friday, and that's exactly what happened. 
Hey, join us at Olsh for Fall Open House this Sunday, October 22nd. Explore all that Olsh has to offer and see what makes Olsh the best independent Catholic high school in our region. Register now at www.olsh.org. Six play drive out, took about three minutes off the clock and uh, eight yards, that's all she wrote. It's the kind of start that you like. Yeah, you, you're turning you're some start, turning some time off the clock, and uh, exactly, those little miscues will bite you, and it bit Bishop right now. So, yeah, it's the kind of start you like if you're wearing purple, gold, and pink. Yes, tonight. sir, 100. <laughs> percent That's right. Pink out night here. Altmar with the run up. It's another line drive kick. This one is going to be picked up at the 31. Cross midfield. There's some open field here. He picks up a block. Down across into Charger territory. Altmar, the last one to beat. He pushes him out of bounds. It's going to be Crusader ball at the 15-yard line. Kavari Holman on the uh, return now. And, uh, yeah, he saw nothing but daylight on the far side. And uh, they're going to knock him out right there by the, what, the 15-yard line? Right at the 15. First, yep. first and 10 for the Crusaders. That was just some great blocking up through the middle for the Crusaders and the Chargers. Good job by Altmar. Yeah, uh, he's doing his job. We watch him in warm-up. Um, I can't remember his name, but they got some good talent over here. I'm not sure if that was a pass or a, a pitch back. That was pretty close to, might have been a pitch, but well, at any rate, it's nine yards. Second and one, Oshevsky's going to hand it off. He's got the first, no, hit the, he's got the line, uh, line to gain. Yeah. He's got the first down inside the five-yard line. Owen oh, Turner needed some help, but he couldn't get it. He, he held the shoestring, but he kept driving. Let's see, was that Carter with the run? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. First and goal from the three-yard line for the Crusaders. So the Crusaders trying to answer the Chargers' quick score. Yep. Carter in the backfield. He gets the ball and he gets it up. He's into the end zone. Three yard run by Mr. Carter. Seven six. With the on on the uh, kickoff or yeah the extra point by Shorthouse coming in for Bishop Canavan. Yeah, Shorthouse. They have two kickers. You got to look and see. It is the the sophomore. Shorthouse will do the kicking duties. Kick. Didn't see who's doing the holding. High snap brought down, Shorthouse ekes it through and it ties the game up with 5.52 left on the clock. We are on, all knotted at seven apiece, Marty. Yeah, so, um, you know, nice little, I kind of figured it was gonna do that. They are trying to, you know, a little bit of pass, a little bit of run, just open up the offense a little bit. So, hey, it looks like one of these games where it's gonna be back and forth. <laughs> it let's really hope. is, it's hope. hope, yeah. yeah. Hey, there's no better way to see yourself as an Oaks student than to become an Oaks Charger for a day. All eighth grade students and transfers to grades 10 and 11 are invited to join us for a, sh for a shadow as a shadow for the day and experience first Oaks. You'll be assigned an, an ally, which is your host for a day, attend classes, meet the teachers and students, and eat lunch on us. Register for your experience at www.oaks.org slash visit. Okay, this is first time. Obviously, we're watching them kick off because the last time they had a blunder. You know, that's what that's what got Olsh down in the uh, gold zone. Now, well, doing the kickoff duties is senior Ryan uh, McFitridge. He'll run it up, and he's going to squib it the same way the Chargers do. This one is going to be picked up about the 28-yard line, and. Goes out of bounds at about the 32. Yep, Jose nope, Schultz. They're going to mark him at the 34. Schultz picks that one up and takes it out to the 34-yard line. That's where the Chargers will start first and 10 at their own 34. Okay, Brady and company and uh, Brandon, <laughs> see what we can do here. And Schultz for the last few weeks trying to nurse that, that ankle back into shape. He's good enough to play, but they're not pushing him. 
he hasn't seen many snaps on the offensive side of the ball. He's been playing strictly defense. And hmm. Need him. There's a tight set for the Chargers, and they'll send Garner in motion. A little spin move. Oh, misdirection play there. Was that Vitorino with no, the No, it was run? Tonery um, on the run. Okay. Oh, and Tonery took the ball. Out to the 37-yard line. Little misdirection there. You're right, Oh, and uh, you're throwing him off a little bit. Yep, it'll be second and seven. I'm going to shout out to a good friend of ours, player, uh, Mr. Greer. Yes. He's uh, healing from his uh, knee surgery. He said he's still a little sore, but he's getting better. Well, I'm so, glad he is. Yeah. Let me tell you, big miss. I mean, ever since that Bergenstein game. Uh, what a tragedy, but he's, he's doing a lot better, and that's a good thing, El. Darion Greer. He'll be a nice pickup for some college. Oh, no question. Here's Brazil off to the right si left side. Gets up to about the 39-yard line, and that's where the Crusaders will shut the door on him. He picks up a couple more. Yeah, that was It'll your big – I'm yep. sorry, El. I apologize. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. That's your big sophomore, uh, Devion Taylor. Last year, El was a freshman. He led the, the team in sacks with 17 on the D end over there. It'll be third and five for the Chargers from their 39-yard line. This time Greer comes over and gets the play. Excuse me. Um, Speedy Gardner. Speedy Gardner. Yeah. I said Greer. We That's were just okay. talking about Greer. Yeah. <laughs> I see he's, he's down on the sidelines right now talking to Dorian Tate. Dorian and Darion <laughs> standing next to each other. Well, we have to take our privilege in next game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. In the shotgun. Brazil back looking to pass. Here comes the rush. He avoids one. Now he's going to run it. He's across the 40, up across to the 43-yard line. Looks the like ball. the ball's on the turf. They're saying the Chargers have it. He was down up around the 43-yard line. It'll be fourth down and about one. Yep. That was a fourth, bad spot. Fourth and one for the Chargers. That looked like a bad spot to me, but maybe I I'm couldn't wrong. tell. There yeah. was too many. Well, you know, and the ball came loose, and the Chargers got it, and who knows. Yeah. Fourth and one from the 34, 30, excuse me. 43-yard line dyslexia. It's a horrible disease. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're standing by the door over there, too. She might have a little chill going it's, down it's, your back. It's a little chilly, damp and chilly. Chargers going for it here from their own territory. The Brazil's in the backfield. Trips to the near side for the Chargers. They need one to the 44-yard line to move the sticks. It's Brady Brazil up the middle. He's going to get hit. They're going to push the pow. I don't think he's going to. Looks like he's right at the sticks, Marty. They're going to give it gonna, to him. They're going to give it to him. This is going to be very close. They're going to major. They're going to major, L, I think, but I think he got it. Yeah, he got it first on. They just, they just turned it. First and 10 for the Chargers. Brady Brazil needed one. He got one. First and 10 for the Chargers at the 44-yard line. Milk truck doing duties. <laughs> Great job by the line to push it. Well, that was Haas. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was I'm Haas. I'm sorry, with the I run. couldn't see it. Yep. Wow. Yeah, Brady. Brandon held it, her, handed it off to Brady. That's awesome. From the 44. Again, the Brazels in the backfield trips to the near side. This one is Brady again, I believe. It is. I don't think he's going to get the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose one back to the 43-yard line. It'll be second and 11 for the Chargers. Yeah, number 54, Braden mm -hmm. Suter on the tackle and a couple other to help him. Kind of what you want, though, El. The, the clock keeps turning. Yep. You know, we're all, all nearing the end of the first. You that's know, that's a that's a bonus right there. Yeah, I, I, all week long I kept thinking if the Chargers can keep this close throughout the game, they got a chance to win. I mean – that's the way this game is going to play out, and they're eating the clock up. We're under two minutes to go here in the first quarter, and we're tied at seven. So this is playing right into the Chargers' hands. Yeah, so far so good. Second and 11 from the 43. Garner sets up wide to the near side. Now in motion. No, that's Garner now in motion. He gets the handoff, the, the sweep. Can he get the corner? He will. Up in a nice tackle there. 
by Marshall. Takes Garner Speedy down at the 45 yard line. Pick up of two, it'll be third and nine. I got a flag on oh, the play, I didn't is. see it either. I didn't either. Mm. Here a little about, oh, yep, it's oh, yeah. false start Chargers. Again, I, I don't, I didn't I don't, see I don't get the, I don't get the false start. No, the false I, start of a pre-snap foul? Yeah, I thought so too, but maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, I, I'm looking for the flag. I didn't see it, but. Well, I mean, uh, the thing is, it's the second week in a row where they call it a false start and they let the play go and then they. Yeah, it happened on Lavella last week too. You're yeah, right. Yeah, Well, that'll move them back five. It'll be second down and 16 for the Chargers back at their 38-yard line. So far, the rain's holding out, Marty, and there's nothing yet. I, maybe like a little bit of mist as the game was starting, but I'm looking at the umbrella right in front of us over our cameras. That nice <laughs> so little setup you had there. Yeah. That's awesome. Brazil back the pass. He's got Garner. Oh, oh he in and out of the hands. He had some. He had the corner on cross. He might have. I don't know if he got the first down, but he'd have made it interesting on third down. But as it is, it's third and 16 on the incomplete pass. I think he heard footsteps. He saw Mr. Cross coming <laughs> on him, and he's like, uh-oh. So, hey, it happens. Um, that was a nice touch pass right there by Brandon Brazell. Just no, off the just fingertips. Just off the fingertips is right. Third and 16 from the 37, 38-yard line. Just play off, boys. You're down to 12 seconds already. Ah, no problem. Okay. Vitorino, Talon. And Tonery out wide to the far side. Garner alone set wide out to the near side. And a timeout is going to be called by the Chargers, I believe. He, Coach Militzer saw the clock, as you saw, Don, uh, Marty, and Don called the timeout with two seconds left on the playoff. Yeah, they didn't have enough clock. time to run that play. That was kind of smart. You don't want to, you know, a game like this, you don't want to be blowing chances. So, Yep. 117 left on the first period clock, and uh, Chargers take their first time out. Hey, uh, you want more information on Olsh Chargers for rosters, stories, and more? Visit www.olshathletics.org. And a special thanks go out to our website sponsor, Covenant Financial Advisor. And also, hey, congratulations to Olsh golfer Jonah uh, Schulart for placing 11th overall in the PIAA Golf Championships this past week. Congratulations, Jonah. Yeah, Ellen, uh, congratulations to the Olds Chargers. Three time the uh, Sportsman's Award, WPIL Sportsmanship Award. They got won it again this year. Nice. They won it uh, 98, 99, 2000, 2007 campaign in this year. So congratulations. Third and 16 for the Chargers. Trips to the far side. Same setup as we had before. Before the timeout, Brazil back the pass. Here comes the rush. He steps up, flips it out, in and out of the hands of Talon up near the 50-yard line. Wouldn't have been enough for the first down, but as it is, it's fourth and 16. The Chargers going to have to punt this one away, and out comes Patty Altmar. Yeah, I think that was a check down right there to yeah. uh, Talon. There's no question. And nothing was open. He said, okay, he's my check down, and uh, there you go. He might have been – Better off running that ball. There was some open space there. I don't know if he'd have gotten the first down, but yeah, a little bit of yardage. And here comes the rain. All the umbrellas are opening up. Oh yeah, I see it hitting our our umbrella over the camera. Yep. Omar back for the snap. He's got it. Gets it away. It's a high short kick. And this one is going to go out of bounds. And Canavan's going to have really good field position. At their own 43-yard uh, line. It looked like the 40-yard line to me. Yeah, it was close. Uh, it was close. You couldn't okay. tell from this angle, yeah. Okay. I was anticipating it between the 40 and 45, so I think they did a great job. First and 10 for the Canavan Crusaders. 105 on the first quarter clock. There you see the score on your screen. 7-7. Seven, seven. Chargers hanging tough with the powerful Crusaders. This is true. Matlock runs on to the field last minute. There's a swing pass out. The 40-yard line, and he's hit there at the line of scrimmage. Maybe one yard for, for Mott. And guess who again, El? 
number 21, <laughs> Mr. Vetterino, coming from that left side. Coming on that that left, uh, yeah, left line. He, is he playing linebacker today? Yeah, and then uh, actually the milk truck come up to shore it up. How, he had a little linebacker action there. Yeah, well, I think he's playing DN, actually. Well, no, they keep switching around, so, yeah. Trips to the near side for Crusaders. Chesky in the shotgun, second and nine. Hands it off, and a big hole opens up, up the middle of Chargers. Meet him at the 50-yard line. They'll give him forward progress into Charger territory at the 49. Speedy Gardner on the tackle to save it. Carter with the run. Yeah, a nice little run by Carter. He found a nice hole, and uh, Mr. Gardner said, uh-uh. This is where we're at, and that's the end of the first quarter, L. That's it. We have completed one. Nothing's been decided. It's 7-7 here at Moon Stadium. Hey, throughout the month of October, Diane Cleaners is accepting donations of gently used coats, babies, sizes baby through adult sizes for those in need within our local community. Coats can be dropped off at Diane's Cleaners only. Uh, and once you drop them off, they will be cleaned before distribution. Please do not drop off coats at Olsh. Also, the Olsh Theater Department presents its annual Fall Theater Festival featuring two one-act plays, monologues, poems, and other performance performances uh performance pieces the festival will take place on saturday friday and saturday october 27th and 28th on the old floor doors will open at 6 30 tickets are ten dollars for adults five for students and will be available for sale through hometown ticketing beginning monday october 16th and that's carter he did not get to get anything no he gets hit at the line of scrimmage no gain it's going to be fourth down and two Mr. Hadley over there to help out, and uh, boy, let me tell you, so far this defense out looks pretty good for the Chargers tonight. They're up against a challenge. Just underway here in the second. Mr. Vitorino's playing out of his mind so far. He's been on before tackles so far. I got trips to the far side. Crusaders going to go for it in Charger territory at the 49. They throw it out to Cross. Cross looking for some room. He's got the first down and some open field. Owen Tonery dives and can't get him. Cross is going to take it to the house. It's going to be 49 yards to the house for Cross on the little swing pass from Olszewski. Yeah, right there. He uh, had some opening else all daylight. I thought they was going to get him there on the far end. But too much talent, Mr. Cross right there. And he went to the house, like you said, 49 yards to the house. See no flag, so the play's going to stand. They, boy, once he got past the line of scrimmage, Marty, it just, the, the seas just parted for him. Yeah, that little swing pass over on the far side gave him some room. Short house for the point after. It's up and through the uprights, and it's good. And just like that, Canavan has taken a seven-point lead. It's 14-7, to seven. Bishop Canavan over your Chargers. Yeah, 14-7 here, 11 8 to go. And, uh, yeah, stuff like that, you know, Cross, you know, we can say that from up here, L, but um, you contain him. You're, you're kind of, you know, really uh, <laughs> <laughs> helping yourself. Hey, interested in supporting our Olsh Chargers? Visit www.olshathletics.org and check out the fundraiser section in the Fan Zone tab for the latest fundraising opportunities. 11.08 left on the second quarter clock, and the Crusaders take their first lead of the game. Yes, they do. Back and forth, back and forth. Again, it's Ryan McFetridge with the kick from the 40 yard line, just roll this one up and that's muffed there a moment and we have a flag 
offsides on Bishop Canavan. Sure was. Looks like we'll line up and do this again from the 35 yard line. That one was fell on by uh, um, Shimetti. Yeah. Yep. The Crusaders will kick again. Look for a little bit more of the same. Looks like none of these guys want to. The Crusaders don't want Garner to get their, his hand on the ball, and the Chargers don't want Cross to get the hand on the ball, so they're squibbing it. Uh, this is true. I mean, that's <laughs> that's a good analogy, Owen. and that's exactly what's going on here. Yeah, so they both are threats that scored yeah, any, nope. any point of the field. You there know. is no doubt. Yep. Here's the run-up of McFredridge. This time he'll pooch it to the far side, picked up there at the 30-yard line. Little stutter step up across the 40, and out of bounds. About the 41, 42 yard line. Didn't see who that was. was Mr. That, Talon Ellis. Is it, was it? Yes, it was. Mr. Talon Ellis over there on the far side. You, you said it right, Al. I mean, they keep going to the left or the right. We did the same. You know, we want to squib it. We want to go left or the right. We don't want Cross to get it. You don't want Gardner to get it. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, so far, you know, this is a d defensive, you right. know, battle. Yep. yep. St strategic Strate battle. Yeah, strategic is right. From the 41, the Chargers will take over with 11.03 left here. In the second quarter, trailing by seven. So far, both teams have played a pretty good game. The Chargers took advantage of some miscues by the Crusaders in the opening possession. And here come the Chargers. Brazell with the run. He's going to get hit in the backfield and going to be brought down at the 40. He's going to lose one back to the 40. It'll be second and 11. I don't know. That looked like a, a, a muffed play or broken something. Broken play for yes. sure, yeah. Yeah, it looked like a broken play. It had no uh, continuity to it. Yeah. But the clock keeps rolling here. Brazil comes over to the, toward the sideline, gets the play. No hurry. His play clock is still around 20 seconds, so we're okay. good to go. Brandon's done a wonderful job at quarterback, Al. He, he really, really is. is. And that's like Coach Militzer said. He says he's not a quarterback. He's a football player. He says I can put him anywhere on the field, and he'll perform for me. Exactly right. Trips to the far side for Brazell. Brother Brady in the backfield with him. Brandon's going to take it himself up the middle, cross the 40, up close to the 43-yard line is the um, rugby scrum forms, and uh, they're going to mark him at the 44. It'll be pick up a four. It'll be third and seven for the Chargers. Yes, and number 84 on the tackle for the Bishop Canavan Crusaders. That was uh, Cade Barton. First, you, you should say the first one to meet him. Because it was, yeah, this, was is, this is true. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Al. You're right. I'm trying to be nice. There was a pile of white shirts and a pile of purple shirts there. Yeah. Third and seven from the 44. Nine and a half to go in this one. In, in, the, in the half. Brazil looking to throw the ball. Here comes the pressure. He steps up. He flips it out. And mm. Just out of the reach of Tonery. When coverage was uh, Tajir Clayton. It'll fall incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Here comes Patrick Altmar onto the field again for the Chargers. Punt this one away. Yeah, and I look for on the, again, away from Mr. Cross. Yeah, Cross will go back. Well, actually, no, Cross is right no, here. No, that's uh, Marshall back deep for the Chargers, or for the Crusaders. Cross is anticipating a, Fake punt, but it's not. Altmar puts it down there. Oh. Hit immediately. And onto the ground. The Chargers have the ball. They sure do. Oh, there's a flag. There's a flag. There's a flag. Wow. A little too early, L, I think, is what they're going to call. Personal foul. You know what? It, 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 I hate to make comparisons, but that was eerily similar to a hit that was at Burgettstown and no call. Mm. And uh, Haas. Now, now we're going to have a conference. So. Yeah. So, Mr. Brady Brazell right there, Johnny on his spot. He lit him up. I mean, my goodness, I didn't expect that. I thought he timed that perfectly myself. So did Marty. I. I but thought he timed it I perfectly. Think that when you see a flag like that, that's what we're going to call nine times out of ten. See what they say. Interference on the Chargers. Yep. It'll be first down. 
Man, I don't know what they're seeing, but that is not interference for sure. That's uh, that was perfect timing. I as thought I call it was. It. Yep. He didn't call. He didn't call for a fair catch. Nope. And he hit him right as the ball got there. I thought. I thought it should be charter ball fair on the 30-yard line. Fair game. That's just the way it goes. From the 45. First and ten for the Crusaders. Coming across the field is Clayton. Can he get the corner? He will. Nice shoe, shoestring tackle by Garner there. Garner picks to up, save it. Picks up nine yards. It'll be second and one from the Charger 46. Yeah, Gardner, nice play over there, Well, to contain. Mushevsky brings the play in for the Crusaders. 8.45 on a rolling clock in the second. Trips to the far side for the Crusaders. Under center is Oshevsky. Quick swing pass out and over the head. Yep, over the head of Jaden Lindsay. Lindsay, yeah. He had all kinds of room out there. That was a good play, but Oshevsky with the happy feet throws it. Uh, Throws it for somebody that's 6'5 instead of, uh, what's what's Lindsay? 5'7". Every, every bit of 5'7", <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, they flushed him, you know, Elsa. Yeah. That's what happens. And you, you, you hurry him up, and uh, this is what happens. He gets the happy feet. Yeah. Eight and a half to go in this one. Clock stops with the incomplete pass. It'll be third and one. Oshesky again under center. Twins to either side. Carter in the backfield. Now he sends in motion. They're going to try that same play, and this one's going to be incomplete again. That was blocked. Yeah, it was. Somebody M got the hands up. M Mr. Branch had was his. Was it Branch? Yes, it was. I couldn't see if that was 52 or 62. Mr. Branch. Or 58 or 62. Or, or Hatherley or Branch had their hand up there and knocked it down. Fourth and one for the Crusaders. T.J. Watt like yeah. jumping up and batting the boat on. That's that's what you teach your lineman. If you can't get to the quarterback and you see him getting ready to throw, get the hands up. Yep, go into the pass. Here we go. Trips to the far side. This time Oshesky will be in the shotgun. Carter will be next to him. Carter's got it. He's got the first down across the 45. Chargers say they have the ball. They do. They do. And that's Brady and they do. Brazell. The Chargers. Ross Brazell get it. Oh, wow, was that big. Carter coughs it up, and the Chargers, Brazell, or the, yeah, the Chargers, Brazell, jumps on the ball. First and 10 for the Chargers from their own 42. Brady Haas Brazell says, okay, I can play that <laughs> game too. You know, it's, it's good with these miscues. These turn, it's going to be a, a battle of a turnover, Zell. Whoever has the best turnover, you know, against is going to win. Well, so far, the Chargers with no turnovers. Yep. Two. With Canavan. Two with Canavan. Well, I, well, well, I would say, yeah. Turnover on turnover downs. Turnover downs, right. On that, on that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Punt, yeah. Yeah, you're right. There's that little si single wing set here that the Chargers are showing. Tonery on the sweep. He gets hit in the backfield. That one goes nowhere. It's going to be brought down for a loss of one, two, three yards back to the 39. It'll be second and 13 for the Chargers. And the Crusaders had that one snuffed out. Yeah, Davon uh, Taylor, the, the uh, great defensive end over there for the Crusaders. Again, led these Crusaders last year in sacks with 17. So he's he's for real. He's only a sophomore. He's getting commitments from Penn State, Pitt, West Virginia, all, a whole host of colleges in the area. And he's a sophomore. He's a sophomore. <laughs> yes, sir. Kind of like uh, Matt Sig. Yeah. Oh, Matt Sig just a beast. He's and he's just a sophomore. What he got? Two hundred? What two thousand yard throwing? Two thousand yard uh, rushing? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just it's ridiculous. Twins to either side for the Chargers. Second and thirteen. Brazil. The Brazil's in the backfield. It's Brady with the run up the middle. He's across the forty. He breaks a tackle. He's across the forty-five. Still pushing the pile, and he's out to about the 47, 48 yard line. Nice run there by the Haas. Haas is right, and uh, they, they, they called his number, Al, and I tell you, these Brazil boys got heart. You know, they really do. Like, you know, Coach said pregame, when you had that little pregame conference with him, he said, you know, these kids will play hard any position, and they do. We're talking about Brazil's. Third and manageable. It's third and five for the Chargers. Need 
The line of gain is the Crusader 48-yard line. With 6.50 and a rolling clock, twins to both sides. The Brazels in the backfield. Brandon calls out the signals. Got the snap. He hands it off to brother Brady. Brady up close to the 50-yard line. He'll fall right at the 50. It'll be fourth and two from midfield stripe and six and a half to go. I anticipate the Chargers to go for this here. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Najee Austin on the tackle for the Crusaders though, but yeah, I think they will too. I mean, uh, they, you know, what do you got to lose? Right. Where do you got to lose? I mean, all the odds makers, I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is bank money as, as Coach Militzer likes to say. This is bank money. This is like, you know, nobody's expecting the Chargers to win this game, so you know, put it on the line and roll the dice and see what happens. Yeah, I was hearing, you know, analysts saying 35, 48, 40 points yeah. win tonight. Nah, nah. Twins on either side, fourth and two. Time out. Purcell. Time out, Chargers. Chargers going to call their second time out. So what they did, L, they switched up. They went to a five-man front and they threw, Bra uh, excuse me, Brandon off. So he said, hey, it's called timeout, and it's uh, rethink this. Well, that's a good timeout. I mean, this is this is, could be a critical part of the game, you know, and the Chargers get a first down here, and who knows. But yeah, uh, if you give it up here and, and you lose yardage and, get, have a, a, again, a turno turnover fumble picked up and run back or throw an interception, and then you give the Crusaders the upper hand and then the, the – Mighty Mo goes into their direction. Yeah, the my, Mighty Mo is right. The momentum swings the other way. But let me tell you, with the plethora of injuries for this Charger team, a lot of heart. This is by far one of the most um, inspiring seasons, at least at, uh, already the Sacred Heart, just because of the injuries and the way that this team is performing. Who'd have thought with the, all the major injuries from ma starting players and and just players in general, that they would be still in contention for playoff with two games left in the season. It's crazy. Fourth and two from the 50-yard line. And the Chargers jump. Haverly jumps ahead. And that will push the Chargers back. This may change the thought process here as Altmar does come onto the field now. Yeah, you don't want to give him really, really good field position as uh, Cross is going to go back deep yeah, he this, will time. this time. Yeah, you know, this is that definitely, you know, David versus Goliath here tonight. They got 43 guys. We got, what, maybe 21, 22. Dressed, yeah. Dressed, so. High snap, Altmar has it blocked. This one goes all the way back inside the 15. It's going to be muffed and picked up there, and he's going to be waltzing it into the end zone. It's going to be a touchdown for the Crusaders, and that's not what you wanted if you're a Charger fan. Yeah, a little miscue there, L. Um, it, it hurt them. Now they got a 14-point advantage. They put it through the uprights here going into the locker room. Well, it's still a lot of yeah. time, but what I'm saying is momentum just swung the other way. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. just what we were talking about. Yep. Who picked that, that ball up, L? I, I was looking at uh, my stats, and I, I didn't see it. I couldn't tell if it was the sophomore – uh, Davion Taylor. I'm thinking it was Taylor. Gotcha. I didn't know if it was. There's a high snap. It's down. And, man, line drive that one through. I didn't think that would had the height to get through, but it just does get up over the crossbar. And it's 21 to 7 for the Crusaders over your Chargers. Yeah, block punt. Um, you know, those, these things happen. So, uh you know, two costly miscues, one with Canavan and one with Ole so far. And 21-7, uh, she reads on the scoreboard at 538 to go here before we go to the locker room. Hey, the annual Ole tradition, Turkey Bingo is back. Join us in the Ole AAC on Saturday, November 11th, and try your luck at winning a turkey for your Thanksgiving dinner. Just ten dollars gets you six bingo cards for each regular game throughout the evening, plus the chance to win door prizes. You can participate in other raffles and games throughout the evening. Proceeds benefit the Olsh bowling team and the theater department. Hmm. I'd like to thank the uh, theater department for running the concession stands here tonight. 
Yeah, Ryan, they're doing a great job down there. Ryan. I went down there, and I'll tell you what, Drumby down there was that popcorn burning down there. <laughs> I'm like, wow, does that smell popcorn. good? I bet you they're sell selling the heck out of the coffee and hot <sighs> chocolate tonight. I'm sure. It's just that damp air that just goes you cold to the bones. Mm. McFit Ridge over to the far side. This is Talon again. It is Ellis Talon up across the 35. And they finally put him down at about the 36 yard line. First and 10 for the Chargers. Five, five and a half left here in this one, in the half. Actually, Talon Ellis. Or, excuse me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> again. Dyslexia. Yeah, dyslexia a, is, is, I apologize. is a, a beast. But no yeah. disrespect. It's no. Hey, we all make mistakes. That's why I got a racer on the other side of this pencil. But Yep. Talon Ellis. He's playing a big role the last couple of weeks. He's, he just, really, he's really stepped up. Yeah, he, he really has. has. Wins to both sides. Brazell's in the backfield. Brandon, straight run to the near side. Gets around the tackle. He picks up about four yards out to the 40-yard line. Mark him at the 41. Pick up a five. It'll be second and five for the Chargers. Yeah, nice little pickup. Just kept turning his legs. And, you know, we got a nice size offensive line. And I think we match up well with Bishop Canavan. So here comes... Uh, Mr. Number 15. Last week he was five, right? Last week he was wearing 25, 25 because of a jersey issue. Was. Yeah, I, I saw him on the field today pregame, and I said, ah, hey, you got your 15 back. And he says, yes. Owen Tonery. <laughs> Owen Tonery. Yeah. Twins to both sides. Second and five for the Chargers from their 41. There's a flag. And this one, I believe, is going to go against the Chargers. Yep. Blew the False whistle. False start. Yep. Now will back him up five. It'll be second and ten. Yeah, so second and ten. Regroup. Let's run it again. You know, I'm watching this uh, BC defense, and they're starting to the, – the defensive backs are starting to creep closer and closer to the line. You know, they're drawing him in right now. Cross is the deepest back, and he's he's like, well, now he's backing up. He's like 10 yards behind the online scrimmage, but everybody else is within five yards of the box. It's Brandon faked it to Brady. Brandon gets picks up about two, maybe three. Yep, and um, number zero, Henry Barbish on the tackle, along with a couple others to meet him right there at the line of scrimmage and actually a loss. No, uh, no, no, he picked up. Well. He picked up one. I guess he did pick up one, I'm sorry. Third and nine. Yeah, that was that was where he put the ball in the belly of Haas and the milk <laughs> truck took it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tell you, oh, I love these Brazil boys and we're not trying to favor anybody. I'm just saying, man, I tell you, they really like this what uh what a great pickup for some college. Huh? Oh, my goodness, yes. It's a two-for-one package. Yes. Trips to the near side, third and nine. Brandon going to fling it oh. in and out of the hands. Garner had his hands on it. Good coverage there by the Crusaders, I think. I think that was Lindsay on the coverage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that was Lindsay right there, and Cross was not too far right. behind. Fourth down, here comes Patrick Altmar back out onto the field. It's about the same part of the field where the punt was blocked last time, and that all started from a high snap. Yeah, it did, and he had he had a little bit of time to really get it off. I gotta find out who the long snapper is for punts, because Schultz does for the, that one. Almost got blocked in, but a nice kick by. I think did he not touch that? It looked like he did. Go. What? Oh, no, I thought he him. touched that. The Charger bench is all saying he touched it. And Chargers picked it up. That was Brady picks it up and goes into the end zone. But the officials are saying first and ten for the Crusaders at their own 34-yard line. Now, the long snapper, he just called his name. Brady Brazell is a long snapper. Is he? Yes, he is. For the punts. Yes, he is. All right. Because I know um, Isaiah Schultz is the long snapper for the kickoff. The kicks. Yeah. 
field goals and point out point afters. Yep. From the 34, 314 left in the half. It's 21 to 7. Crusaders. And here comes the rain. I see more umbrellas going up here. Matt, uh, I keep calling you Matt. <laughs> Marty. That's all right. They we both start with M A. We all we all <laughs> make mistakes. <laughs> That's why we're not uh, calling the Penn State Ohio State there game no more. Wachewski under center. That was definitely a false start. Yes, it Bishop was. Bishop Canavan. That'll back Canavan up five yards. Go back to the 29-yard uh, line. It'll be first and 15. Mm. All right. Again, the key to stopping this offense you know, the run game of Carter is definitely Cam Branch. He he did a really good job last week, Al, over a Vela to clog that hole. He was a beast. He and was th a that beast. Whole, that whole defensive line. Yeah. They, uh, were just, they were just eating territory up. And Matt Locke will eat you alive. He he just, he, when he come over today pregame, I'm like, he's a big drink of water. Again, a three-man front. There was another flag yes. and another procedure call. On the Crusaders, they're jumping ahead of the ball, and that'll back them up another five. It'll be first and 20. Yeah, 54 jumped for Bishop Canavan that I saw. Backs him, backs him up to the 24-yard line. First and 20. Olszewski tells his mates the play. He will go under center, two in the backfield. Turns around, he hands it off to Carter. Carter up the middle. He's got some open field. He's hit at the 35, falls forward to about the 37-yard line. That'll get him back inside the change. It'll be second and eight. That's Mr. Gardner on the tackle. Speedy Gardner coming over. Second and seven. That's the way you get those yards back. And you're just wondering when Oshetsky's going to throw one up before end of half here to see what he can do. Yep. That's just my gut feeling. He likes to throw those little screens out far, out to the flat, out on the far side. You know, like, 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 I don't want to say like a Vela, but uh, similar game plan is you lull you to sleep and then he'll hit you over the top. Yep. I formation, Oshetsky under center, second and seven from their 37. Back to pass. He's going to fling it. There it goes over the top. And who's he got? What I tell you? There he is, number eight. Lindsay. Number, number eight, Lindsay. And he took a chance at it, and there it was. Wow. That's yeah, a touchdown. Sure is. Jeez. Lindsay for the, what would that would have been a. Seven. 62, 60, 63 yard yeah, touchdown. Yeah, I was say 62 or 63 yards. Shesky to Lindsay for the touchdown. We just called that. It'll yeah, hit you, I, burn I, you over the top. Yep, he's going to try it. Short house for the point after. Lindsay with the hold. And this one is good. Again, he, he don't get him high. Boy, if the Chargers can get their hands up, they can block him because these balls aren't more than six feet off the ground when they cross the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Patty Altmaier puts him up in a, uh, like way over. Like, we was watching him pregame. Here's a trampoline behind <laughs> the field goal. Probably another 20 yards back here. He was just launching them. And, and high. And high is right. So with two minutes left to go here, 28-7. Crusaders open it up, and uh, just like we thought, they're going to take a shot downfield. And the Crusaders doing what good teams do. They're yeah. taking advantage they of, of mishaps sleep. and, yeah, yeah, and taking advantage of charter misplays. And mm. McFitridge will do the kicking duties. Back deep is Garner. He hasn't seen the ball yet on a kick. There's the run up. We'll squib this one. Picked up there. Vitorino will wrap his arms around it. Just short of the 40 yard line. Let's see where they mark him. Looks like they're going to mark him at the 39. It'll be first and 10 for the Chargers. 207 left in the second quarter clock. 
Come on, let's get some momentum into the locker room here. It's it's it's, it's uh remember, you know double it up. And remember, the Chargers will get the ball. Yes, to start they will. This third quarter. So, if I read the the signals right at the beginning of the game, they won the the toss and deferred to the second half. Mm. Oh, yeah, you are right. That's right, Al. Twenty-one point lead for the Crusaders right now. Twenty-eight to seven. The Chargers were first to score, and the Crusaders have scored, rattled off twenty-eight straight. Trips to the far side from the thirty-nine. Brazell out the pass, and he's got his man, and he breaks a tackle across the fifty. It's Garner gets pushed out of bounds inside the forty-five yard line of the Crusaders at the forty-three. First and ten, Chargers. Nice little pass right there. Ted Gardner, and it's the first time, like the uh, announcer says here, Al, and let me tell you, that was a nice catch right there by Gardner. That was a nice pass, catch, and, and run. It was, really. Everything worked to perfection. Exactly. Two minutes exactly left on the second quarter clock. Chargers in Crusader territory here. Boy, that Barberich is a tall drink of water, is he not? Yeah, yeah he's 6'4", he yeah. Yeah. Garner the lone wide out to the near side. Brazell looks the other way, though, and he bounced this one in front of Tonery. Right on him, though, was Clayton. I don't know if he'd have picked up that much yardage, but uh, it's incomplete. Second and 10 from the 43. Yep, a little short there for Mr. Tonery. Uh, Brandon very rarely misses Al. He really he has a nice touch on the ball. He really does. Marty, that's a, that's a hard throw though. If you're going from the near hash mark across the field, it was almost over at the numbers. Yeah, you're. That's that's a long hard throw. They call that cross grain. It's yeah. kind of hard to do. Trips to the near far side again. Garner will be the lone wide out here, to the near side. The Brazels in the backfield. One fifty-seven on the second quarter clock. Brazell, straight run to the near side. Good block there, but he better tackle there. It gets Brazell at the 45-yard line. Brazell comes up a little gimpy. Mm. Yeah, it was number seven. Uh, Marshall. Mr. Marshall on the tackle. Third and 12 from the 45. Brazell. Trot back in. Oh, still has one timeout left, though. Yeah, they do with 122 left. Crusaders have all three of theirs. Down might to three seconds. They're probably or they seven seconds. Now they might get it off here. Two seconds. Yeah, they do. Brazil back to pass. He's got Garner. Wow, I thought he grabbed him as Gardner was cutting toward the middle field. I thought Cross just got that arm on his hand to try to spin him around. It didn't happen. Well, they call him Speedy Gardner for a reason. Speedy Gardner went right past Cross like he was going 60 mile an hour in a 30 mile lane. <laughs> and I thought for sure he had it. And it'll be fourth down. 58 seconds left in the half. Mr. Altmaier out there. Altmaier. Yep. I see Cross. I would just kick it toward the other sideline. That's just true. High snap. Gets it away. That one's off the side of the foot and straight out of bounds. And Crusaders are going to get great field position here. At the 40-yard line. Well, knowing Coach Johnson, they're going to probably take, try to take a shot downfield. Oh, yeah, they will. And uh, let's see what happens. 40, 53 seconds left from the, their own 40. They're 60 yards away. Remember the last touchdown went 63, so. So far, a 49-yard pass and a 63-yard pass for touchdowns for the Crusaders. Trips to the far side. Carter in the backfield with Oshevsky. It'll be Carter. No, Shashevsky flips it out. Little juke move there. Was that Marshall? Yeah, it is. Trying to get away, and Brazil will not let him go. Yeah, Brandon, it's not my house. This is my <laughs> house. Uh, where are you going? So Milk Truck says, uh-uh. Uh, was that? Was that Brandon? Yeah, that was Brandon. Okay. That was Brandon, number 30. I see. Uh, 
Damari Broth over there. Timeout. Time out. Yep. Canavan, right? Yes, sir. Okay, that comes with 44 seconds left here in the half. And don't forget, uh, join us in the AAC for the annual faculty versus students basketball game on Tuesday, November 21st. Doors open at 6 p.m. Tip off, tip off is at 7 p.m. Tickets will be sold during school lunch periods for $5 each or $7 at the door. Gear up for the game by purchasing an exclusive T-shirt through www.olshgear.com and proceeds from the game and T-shirts sales benefit the Olsh Junior Senior Prom. Okay, so uh, now they're... Uh, Trips to the right. So let's see what happens here, Hill. Second and 12 on that loss of two. Yeah, trips to the near side. Oshevsky looks this way. He's going to flip it down the field, and he's got Marshall wide open. He'll make the catch at the Charger 35-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Crusaders at the 35. And if Oshevsky could have thrown that ball out in front of Marshall, he's still running. Yeah. He just put some air under it, a good 35, 40-yard pass down, down to Marshall. Down to 30 seconds left in the half. Trips to the far side this time for Oshevsky. Snap, looked like he wasn't ready for it. He caught it, looking the far side. He's going to flip it out, and there's a catch there at the 23. Lindsey breaks a tackle at the 15, and he slips and goes down at the 13. First and 10 for the Crusaders. He had six written all over it, but the rain says no. I mean, he slipped right there, so. And Kahneman takes their second timeout with 15 seconds left. Yeah, and it's obvious they're going through the throat right here. Oh, Al. yeah. Uh, so. Going for the jugular. Yep. You know, it was close first half here for a while. Like you said, 28 unanswered points. So. Hey, uh, before we go to the half, want to wish good luck to our Osh boys and girls soccer teams, girls volleyball team, and the cross country team as they all head into the playoffs next week. Let's go Chargers. That's awesome. Good luck to you guys. First and 10 from the Charger 13 yard line. As you said, Marty, Crusaders trying to put an exclamation point on this in the, at the end of the half. Oshevsky calls for it. He's back to pass. Looking into the end zone. He's going to flip it out, and this one is going to be out of the reach of Marshall. Couldn't see if that was a seven or a two. It's Marshall going after the ball over there. Yep. That stops the clock with 10 seconds left on the scoreboard. And you got to believe that Mr. Cross will have something to say about this before the end of the half. Second and 10 from the 13. Oshevsky will send three to the near side, one to the far side. Shevsky back to look in the end zone one more time. He flips it up and in and out of the hands of Cross. Yeah, if it wasn't overthrown, uh, I don't know, El, but I tell you what, I like how you put Vitorino on him over there. He yeah. has a hot hand right now on Cross. Well, Cross was open, and like I said, it's, it, Oshevsky's got all these yardages from what I'm seeing today. It's, it's if it wasn't for his receivers, he's, he's just an average quarterback. Yeah. With four seconds left, you got to figure one last play for the Crusaders, and they'll probably one more time dump it into the end zone or do a quarterback draw or give it to Carter on a draw play. I'm looking for him to spread it out and go no, right they're, up there. They're, they're bunching nope, it they up. They are bunching it up. Okay. Carter in the backfield, Oshevsky in the shotgun. Back to pass. Looking, looking, looking. Here comes the pressure. He's just going to flip it up, and this one is going to be knocked. It's going to be incomplete. And that will end the first half. 
with the score. Chargers trailing the Canavan, Bishop Canavan Crusaders 28 to seven. Once again, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Doughboy's Oven Fresh Pizza, IBEW Local Union 712, Osego Automotive Sales and Service, Trim Pittsburgh, a shop for men, and Brewer Airport Toyota. Yeah, also, you know, uh, again, uh, Osh opened up with that 7 nothing lead. I says, okay, we're going to hang in here for a while. And for the longest time, it was 14-7. But that miscue, that block punt, um, that's what kind of sealed the deal. And as like you said, that momentum swing right there. And 28 unanswered points to put your Canavan uh, Crusaders up over your Osh Chargers, 28-7, to going into the locker room. But the good news is the Chargers will get the ball to start the second half and see if they can't start on a positive note and – claw their way back into this one so far so good i don't see any injuries i, I don't want i want to knock on wood right you know that's the biggest thing that was the big one of the big things last week yeah they come away with the victory last yeah. week but nobody got no hurt. major injuries yeah yeah I, I see bame he's out tonight i wonder what yeah, happened to I him don't know. but you know um so obviously this is a big important game in the black hills conference and, uh, boy, next week, Al, for all the marbles, I'm yeah. sure, down at uh, Franklin Terry Stadium. Yeah, for both teams. Yep. Hey, we're going to step aside and uh, take a pause for the cause, and we're going to run down to that pretty cool uh, concession stand and do our thing, and, and we'll come back and we'll give you some, maybe we'll get some stats from Mr. Brazil and, and uh, all that good stuff. But don't go away. Chargers and the Crusaders doing battle here t at the present. It's at halftime. It's 28-7, to 7, as you can see there. Bishop Canavan on tops. But don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. I personally love the family environment of Walsh and that's what I saw from my first day coming in as a freshman. Everybody was kind and helpful. All the teachers and all the students, we all treat each other like family. So it's it's more like a homey type feel. You get to know everyone who goes here. It's like a community. Everyone's together and we're all just like a family. I think I've grown more religious through the teachings and understanding the religion better. With the amazing theology teachers and getting the chance to go to church every week, it's definitely expanded my faith. Different things like Cairo retreat or uh, being able to come to confession or go to adoration here in the chapel every day gives you really a good opportunity to connect with God and express their faith and not feel shy about it. The teachers are incredible. They make you feel like one of their own kids. I feel comfortable going to them at any time for whatever the need be, and I know they always have my back to help me. They get to know you personally and get to help you in different ways. They're not just worried about your grades, they're worried about how your feelings are. They care about you more. Orsh is a place where you can get involved in a bunch of different things. It sets you up for college. It's a school full of many opportunities that'll help you grow, not just spiritually, but also just as a person in general. Olsh is one big family. Everybody knows everybody. Olsh is challenging adventure and it really just is an amazing experience.
I personally love the family environment of Ocean. That's what I saw from my first day coming in as a freshman. Everybody was kind and helpful. All the teachers and all the students, we all treat each other like family. So it's, it's more like a homey type feel. You get to know everyone who goes here. It's like a community. Everyone's together and we're all just like a family. I think I've grown more religious through the teachings and understanding the religion better. With the amazing theology teachers and getting the chance to go to church every week, it's definitely expanded my faith. Different things like Cairo retreat or uh, being able to come to confession or go to adoration here in the chapel every day gives you really a good opportunity to connect with God and express their faith and not feel shy about it. The teachers are incredible. They make you feel like one of their own kids. I feel comfortable going to them at any time for whatever the need be, and I know they always have my back to help me. They get to know you personally and get to help you in different ways. They're not just worried about your grades, they're worried about how your feelings are. They care about you more. Ors is a place where you can get involved in a bunch of different things. It sets you up for college. It's a school full of many opportunities that will help you grow, not just spiritually, but also just as a person in general. Olsh is one big family. Everybody knows everybody. Olsh is challenging adventure and it really just is an amazing experience. I personally love the family environment of Ocean. That's what I saw from my first day coming in as a freshman. Everybody was kind and helpful. All the teachers and all the students, we all treat each other like family. So it's, it's more like a homey type feel. 
you get to know everyone who goes here. It's like a community. Everyone's together and we're all just like a family. I think I've grown more religious through the teachings and understanding the religion better. With the amazing theology teachers and getting the chance to go to church every week, it's definitely expanded my faith. Different things like Cairo retreat or uh, being able to come to confession or go to adoration here in the chapel every day gives you really a good opportunity to connect with God and express their faith and not feel shy about it. The teachers are incredible. They make you feel like one of their own kids. I feel comfortable going to them at any time for whatever the need be, and I know they always have my back to help me. They get to know you personally and get to help you in different ways. They're not just worried about your grades, they're worried about how your feelings are. They care about you more. Orsa is a place where you can get involved in a bunch of different things. It sets you up for college. It's a school full of many opportunities that will help you grow, not just spiritually, but also just as a person in general. Olsh is one big family. Everybody knows everybody. Olsh is challenging adventure and it really just is an amazing experience. Back at Moon Tiger Stadium, William Ripshire Field, home of your Olsh Chargers when the Moon Tigers aren't here. Mm -hmm. And they are locked in one right now with one of the top teams in 1A, the Bishop Canaman Crusaders. And right now you see the score on your screen, 28 to seven Crusaders on top of your Chargers. Marty, the Chargers scored first, took advantage of some miscues by the Crusaders, but the Crusaders answered back with 28 unanswered to their own yeah um you know i thought here we go you know it, the tides were turning towards the chargers you know with that one yard plunge by uh, brandon brazell to make it seven nothing with uh, 708 to go in the first quarter then like you said 28 unanswered points uh quickly carter three yard run uh with uh short house extra point then it was a 49 yard touchdown pass from oshowski to cross obviously and short house with the extra point 538 left to go in the second quarter again 21 7 on that block punt with Taylor Taylor on a return short house kick was 21 7 then right here before half excuse me with uh 208 to go 63 yard bomb to Lindsay 28 7 short house with the extra point that's where we stand right now and uh, you know what? Uh, it's been threatening rain it rained it rained a little bit but not like I was thinking we were gonna get a downpour for part of the first half and and nothing and i'm thinking we may get some sprinkles in the second half watch me be totally wrong we'll get down for the second half but, but uh it's just one of them cold damp days right now and i'll tell you what that football must feel like it's a rock when it gets cold and oh. wet it just feels like like you're getting hit with a rock with a pass so um i don't envy the receivers right now <laughs> Well, a lot of momentum, or a lot of, excuse me, a lot of um, charge, not to be pun intended, but they're charged up. Uh, you have a ball coming to you like that. You know, uh, I know Brandon throws a nice soft touch pass. Uh, he don't put a lot on it. He, he's more, I want to say, direct with his throws on target than anything else. So he really is. He don't really try to, you know, muscle it in there. He has a nice little touch on it, but yeah. I look for gonna have to now, you know, with a 21 point deficit, you're gonna have to throw it up at some point, you know, and take your chances. You're gonna have to. I look for Speedy Garner to have a big game in the second half. He looked like he had a yeah. nice, yeah, he looked like he's just starting to turn that tide there before half, but I think he needs, you know, a nice game here in the second half for the Chargers to be successful. So. Well, you're talking, I'm sitting here watching. You can, I don't know if I got rid of the, uh, the overlay yeah, you can see out there well he's right in front of the players on the by the 50 yard line is uh, Dorian Tate so you see him up and about he's not able to play with his concussion protocol but uh, yeah. he's out here throwing the ball to uh, another guy that's not dressed tonight uh, uh, Jake Bame and uh, but uh, he's he's I talked to him before the game too Marty and he's he's in good spirits and he's just wishing he He's chomping at the bit. He wants to be out here, but he can't. So 
Yeah, sure he does. I mean, he's a big part of the equation on his team, you know, if we're going to make any kind of a playoff push. And um, there's a lot of, uh, like I said, when we started off pregame, you got Greer, you know, you got Swagger, you got Tate, you got Van Cables, you got um, now Bain out of the lineup tonight. Uh, you know, that, that's that's a lot of uh, talented players. We had Mara out for a while. Yep, yep. Um, I don't, in fact, I don't even see him on the sideline tonight. Yeah. Um, not all the teams out here yet, but uh, now come to think of it, I didn't see uh, Jaden out here tonight, uh, Jaden Mara. But, uh, yeah, uh, there's so many of the key players that have been out all season. It's just amazing that they're still, like I said before, in the running for a playoff spot, and you got a game and a half to go in, this, in the regular season. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, like I said before, pregame, if you wasn't listening, that's like missing half for the Steelers starters and saying, okay, now go make the playoffs. Your quarterback, three wide receivers, you know, uh, your, your DN, uh, and a, a bunch of guys because they play both sides of the ball, so it's missed on both sides of the ball. So, yeah, but they're doing a great job. Brandon Brazell taking the reins of quarterback. Like he said, I never thought I'd be quarterback, but I got someone <laughs> got to do it, and I'm doing it. So, and his brother Haas, you know, he it's going to be sad, L, because for seven straight years, I know you've been, you know, <laughs> calling the, the Brazell name, and it's going to be hard not to do that here come up next year. You know, I'm not looking for you know, in the future, but I'm just saying that's going to be hard. Well, we're going to play a message here, try to sell some gear, and we'll be back for the second half. Chargers and the Crusaders, 28-7, to 7, Crusaders on top of the Chargers as we take a break. Don't go away. We'll be right back here at Moon Tiger Stadium. Armstrong is alongside. I'm Al Lesh. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope you're enjoying your evening here in October. I guess we can call it late October now. It's yeah coming up. I got a big weekend coming up, Marty. I got my anniversary tomorrow. Oh, happy anniversary. I, I forgot to tell you, you and Kim, happy anniversary. Yeah. I got to see you guys last weekend down Carmody's yeah. by accident. Uh, my <laughs> wife and I went down for dinner. I look behind me, there's that cell and, and a couple <laughs> friends, and uh, we both had the special, the kibasi and oh. the uh, potato pancakes. They were awesome. Highly recommended. It's yeah. good stuff. Go down and check it out. So, yeah, good atmosphere down there. I like it down there. Oh, yeah, no question. But, uh, yeah, I got uh, my anniversary, 21 years with my lovely wife. I love love uh, the 21 years of my best friend and my wife. And, uh, and then on Monday, another year older, Marty. Well, you know, you make me mad because usually I ask you, is there anything we want to talk about precisely on the air? Nah, we're good. Nah. And here he is. Happy. How old are you going to be? 30? Yeah. I'm yeah. The, the gauge is stuck at 39. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, you're right behind me then. So that's awesome. Well, happy birthday. Happy anniversary to you and Kim. I knew it was in October from past uh, broadcasts over the yeah. years, but happy anniversary and happy birthday. You yeah. guys are awesome. Yeah, the story goes uh, for our anniversary and, and uh, my birthday, um, we wanted to get married and um, really didn't have any plans. Both of us were married before, so I said, hey, and neither one of us had really been on a honeymoon, so I said, hey, let's go to the Cayman Islands and get married there, and, and that'll be our honeymoon as well. So. Um, her sister and brother-in-law and my brother, Kim and I all got on a plane and, well, my brother met us there from California and uh, we got married on the beach and, but she wanted to be, she wanted to get married on my birthday and I said, no. That's mine. So, so we, yeah, so we were, we were there for a week. So we got, we, we had to be on the island for 24 hours. We got there on Saturday and uh, met with the people with, for the, doing the wedding on Sunday, got married on Monday, and then my birthday was on Wednesday. So a destination wedding to the Cayman Islands, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey, Grand, happy anniversary. Grand Cayman, yeah. We're, we're, we're 
we're already making plans. My talking to my brother, we're making plans for maybe our 25th to go back to the Caymans. So I hope you do that. So that's, yeah. that's, that's awesome. My man. brother, Let's my brother suggested. He said, we all ought to get together and go back to the Caymans. And I said, Yeah. He's saying this as he's in Hawaii for his two weeks at his condo. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Excuse he's, me. He's on the Big Island in Kona. So. Oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, well, happy anniversary, um, you and Lisa, and happy birthday on Monday, you said? It's Kim. Or Kim, Kim's birthday? Yeah, no, no, my, my birthday's on Monday. No, I know, you and you, you and, you and Kim, oh, it, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you said yeah. Lisa. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant Kim. <laughs> my gosh. That, <laughs> that Prevagen hasn't kicked in yet. <laughs> but <laughs> I am so sorry, Kim. <laughs> Having too much fun now. Oh, we are. But, no, <laughs> seriously, happy anniversary, well, you and Kim, and happy birthday on Monday. Any big plans this Monday? Do anything? Nah, nah, no. No? Actually, uh, no. <laughs> no, I think my wife's got a doctor's appointment. <laughs> well, knowing you, you're going to be putting stats together for the Cornell game. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. I know you. <laughs> I called you the other night. You said, hey, you want to join me in the booth? Christian can't make it. I said, sure. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure out how to do this umbrella. It's supposed to rain <laughs> and put over the camera. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, Al Lush, unbelievable. <laughs> Kim, you married a doozy, let me tell you. Congratulations. We have we have some fun. We have no, some that's fun. awesome. She's in the middle of taking Tai Chi classes at uh, really? St. Malachi. Oh, is she really? Yeah. That's uh, awesome. From, from the parish, uh, Archangel Gabriel. That's awesome, Kim. Keep yeah. it up. Yeah. She, so, she was going the other day, and I said, you're doing this, and I'm moving my hands, and she goes, you do it better than some of the people in the class. <laughs> Well, maybe you both should do it. <laughs> That's what I said. Maybe I'll start going. Well, it's backed off the view and onto the onto the game. Here we go. Here we go. This time we're going to pooch it to the Chargers at the 25. And, wow, coming flying through there. Well, if he made contact, that would have been a – might have been a, an issue. But uh, talent Ellis. <laughs> we got it right. <laughs> brings it out to the 30-yard line. First and 10 for the Chargers. Yeah, again, Al, we, um, you know, it's one of those games right now where 21 points, you know, it's a big deficit, but you got to take your chances. You know, you have nothing to lose. Put it up, see what you can do. Here come the Chargers. Twins to both sides. Brady Brazell trying to go up the middle. He's hit immediately in the backfield. He'll get hit at the 29, no further. Loss of one, second and 11 for the Chargers. Yep, so a uh, whole host of Crusaders met yeah. him right there. Eventually, you're going to spread it out, I'm sure. Open it up a little bit. That'll kind of open up your run game, too. Um, so, let's see what uh, they call. By the way, I was – yesterday when I was up at the school talking to the coach, uh, I ran into Van – in the gym in the AAC and uh, talking to him as the basketball team was there watching the basketball team. Yeah. They were kind of like running through some drills. And I said, how you doing? He says, I'm feeling pretty good. So. Good news. Yeah. Good kid. Second and 11 from the 29. Brazil pretty much in an empty set. He's going to throw it. Looks out to the near side and mm. in and out of the hands of Garner. Oh, you couldn't have placed that ball better. No, uh, that was right off the fingertips and speedy. Couldn't come up with it. It'll be third and 11. That was the same play that they had the big big play in the first half. Yeah. The little swing pass to Garner getting around the corner. Third and 11 from the 29. Chargers trying to get something going here as we open up the third quarter. I look for them to go right back to them, though. That's how they are. They're, it's a brother brotherhood. They're like, okay, we're not going to embarrass you. Let's try this one more time. See what happens. I'd like to see something over the middle. I'm looking they, for they, Talon Ellis to make a play here eventually. Twins to both sides. Again, Brazil left the pass. Mm. And he's going to get swarmed under. Back at the 25. They're going to mark him at the 26. Yeah, number 13, as we talked earlier, El Devon Taylor. That big D end over there. And we got a charger down. Oh, no. This is the first time uh, Aaron Natupski's been on the field for two games. So this is, uh, it's not, uh, it's one of the big boys. Can't see the number. He's on his belly. 
I looks. I see Hatherly kind of gingerly walking to the sidelines too. He's kind of limping. That is uh, Damari Bruff. Mm. <laughs> so, hey. Um, join us at the AAC for the annual faculty. I talked about this already. The annual faculty versus students basketball game on Tuesday, November 21st. Doors open at 6 p.m. Tip-off is at 7 and tickets will be sold during the school lunch periods for $5 each or $7 at the door. You can gear up for the game by purchasing an exclusive T-shirt through www.olshgear.com. Proceeds from the game and T-shirt sale benefit the Olsh Junior Senior Prom. Now, as you were talking about that upcoming event, Mr. Hadley is in some serious pain. He just sat on a bench, and let me tell you, he just – Shook his head as he gingerly walked to the to the bench over here on yeah, the sideline. I see him sitting by himself. Yeah, I mean he really looks like he's sore. So I don't know who it is, whoever it is on the field down. And like you said, I think you said it was Bruff. Bruff, yeah. Yeah, it's it's hope he's okay. Both the Brazels out there around him, along with the Aaron Natupski. Checking him over. Hey, join us. Let's see, where's that one? Oh, here it is. Old Shaw Theater Department presents its annual Fall Theater Festival featuring two one-act plays, monologues, poems, and other performance pieces. The festival will take place on Friday and Saturday, October 27th and 28th. That's next week on the Osh ground floor. Doors will open at 6.30. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for students and will be available for sale through the hometown ticketing beginning on Monday, October 16th, so this past Monday. Come and get in, come and get in the uh, Halloween spirit. Well, Broff come off and Hatherley sitting there in pain. I can see him, and uh, I comes Patty Altmar for the pun, L. Yeah, it's fourth down. From back at the uh, Chargers go backward. They start at the 30 and they end up on a 26. Loss, it's fourth and 14. Omar and Crusaders have been pushing back and getting in his face when he's getting it off. So let's see if uh, they resolve some of those issues. Here's a snap back. Good snap back. That one almost gets punted away or blocked away. It's a bounding ball. Hit immediately is cross, and he can't get away, and he's swarmed under by a couple of chargers, and that's where the Crusaders will have it at their own 42-yard line, first and 10. Speedy Garner on the tackle, L, to uh, shore him up. Followed up by uh, Brazell, Haas. Yep, and uh, Luke Venerino. And, boy, I tell you, the injuries are starting to mount, but as you see Hattery coming back onto the field, he's not looking very good. <coughs> he, he wasn't uh, – he had a little hitch in his giddy-up to begin the game. So, I yeah. mean, yeah, he might have just kind of aggravated it. Ball issue. We <laughs> ran into that a lot last oh week, did we goodness, not? Oh, my goodness, three or four <laughs> times had the wrong ball in there. Like, what are they doing? From the 42, just 10.37 left in the third quarter clock. I'm a big Avella fan tonight. They're playing Bergenstein. Mashevsky <laughs> hands it off to Carter. Carter right up the middle, never touched. Look out here. Tonery and Garner team up to pull him down, but not before a huge gain up to the Charger 42-yard line. Yeah, a good 20-yard run. He just, just reeled off right there at Carter, and uh, like you said, Tonery and boys are right there to get him. Hadley coming back off again. There goes that trips over there, Ellie. It's, yep. it's what we always like to do over there in that corner. Trips to the far side, short side of the field. Well, it's kind of in the middle of the ball is. Carter, another one up the middle. The Chargers wrap him up, and he breaks away. Still going, and they finally bring him. Now, ball's on the turf. The Chargers have it. No question. Mr. Rizal, Johnny on the spot, got the ball. If that's the case, 
Coach Don is, is beside himself. The Chargers ended up with it, but they're giving it to the to the uh, mm. Crusaders. They're going to say he was down, I'm sure. Wow. They're going to mark him at the 36-yard line. Pick up of seven, uh, six. It'll be second down and four. Just shows you, L, the heart this team has. 20 down by 21 points. They're still trying to make things happen. That's a sign of a heart good team. Trips to the far side again. Coming in motion is Cross. They're going to flip it out to the far side. A little bubble screen out there. Avoids one tackler. Hit right at the sticks. He'll fall forward for the first down. It'll be first and 10 at the 31-yard line for the Crusaders. Yep, and that was Jalen Lindsay on the catch over there, L, to make it a first down for the charge, or the, excuse me, the Crusaders. So move the sticks. From the 31. Rolling past nine minutes to go here in the third. Who I just felt a breeze coming. Boy, I was cold. It's <laughs> <laughs> old man winter coming in. Trips to the near side. Carter's got the ball. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage and gets to the 30-yard line. No further. It's a pickup of one. Actually, Carter's out, Al. That was 34, Jamel oh. Lindsay. Oh, that was oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Sorry. He, he come in. Yeah, he gave Carter a spell. I just saw Carter on the sidelines over there. Oh, yeah, I there. see it, yeah. Yeah. That was Lindsey. The other Lindsey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we got the other Brazil. Yeah. Again, I want to thank uh, Bob, Bobby Brazil for running the camera. And then we got Mr. Bob Brazil, the dad, that does stats. So He's a wonderful painter, too. He painted my house. If oh, you ever yeah? want your, your house painted, give him a call. I'm serious. Trips to the near side, second and nine for the Crusaders. Lindsey goes in motion. Oshevsky being chased out of the pocket. He's going to, there's a flag coming down. Oshevsky's out of bounds at the 17, 18 yard line, but I have a feeling this one is coming back. Maybe it's grab us, as Mr. Hillgrove used to say. Yep. That's what it looked like to me. Imagine the Chargers going to push him back here. That's a 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. It's not a spot foul anymore. Yeah. yeah unless, it's, it unless it's up up the field. If it's in the backfield, it goes from the line of scrimmage. So from the 30, it should go back to the 40. It is holding on the Crusaders. Declined. Oh, the holding was declined, and I think they called a face mask. Yeah. So that's even bigger. That's a 15 yard pass. Yes. So that should back him up to the 45, if I, my math is correct. Well, there was another. Oh, there must have been two holds. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. So they Second declined the first one. Second down and 19 from the 40 yard line. Trips to the far side again for Oshevsky. Fakes the handoff, and here comes the pressure, and they flip it out a little on a bubble screen. And right there, was that Ellis? Yeah. Yeah, Ellis. Was, with no, the nice no, no, that was Schultz. Schultz threw him to the ground. No. Yeah, oh, yeah. That was Schultz. Uh, the cross, threw cross to the yeah. ground. Pick up of one to the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and 18. So four minutes and some seconds, then it is – this uh, third quarter, L, back and forth. Yeah. You know, with some penalties and some plays. So. You figure it's two down territory for Crusaders right now. Has as to we're be. Approaching seven minutes to go here in the third. They want nothing more than mercy rule. Believe me, to turn that clock. Shotgun. Oshevsky's going to hand it off. No, he's going to flip it out. And in and out of the hands yep. of Mott. Yep. Monte Mott. For the Chargers. It'll be fourth down and 18. Or the Crusaders, excuse me, to drop the ball. And there was nobody within 10 yards of him. He held onto that ball. Oh, yeah. Mott goes out. Fourth and 18. Under seven minutes to go. 6.52 on the clock. Crusaders will keep the offense on the field. Why not? 
Even if you don't make it and you come up short, you still have the Chargers deep in their territory. Yeah, like a little bubble screen they always yep. do. Twins to either side. Shesky back to pass. Here comes the pressure. He's going to fling it down the field. And it's going to be in and out of the hands of Mr. Cross. And uh, Jason can't come up with it. And it'll be first and 10 for the Chargers at their own 39-yard line. Oh, well, he put it right on his fingertips. I don't know how he missed that. But again, I'm not down there. But that was a nice pass by Shusky. He threw it into, into coverage. He really did. So your Chargers take over. Take over on downs from their own 39-yard line, first and 10. Oh, sorry, I got that flag up there yet. Apologize. Let's see if the Chargers can't do something here in the third quarter, get some points on the board. Mm, that would be nice just to get some momentum back, Al. Cut this lead in half. Or, yeah. Twins to both sides. The Brazils will maintain the backfield. Here comes Brandon right up the middle, across the 40 to about the 42, 43 yard line. It'll be second down in about seven or eight. Yep. Pick up three, it'll be second and seven. Yep, in uh, six minutes and 25 seconds to go and a rolling clock. Um, here comes Gardner in with the play. I'm just wondering if I'm going to start throwing the ball to him. You got to. At some point, you got to start throwing the ball downfield, L. You just can't continue to run the ball, you know, with a 21-point deficit. Well, you take that chance. If you were getting five, six yards on every run, it would be different, but they're not. Yeah, it's, they're exactly. Getting, they're getting two, three yards, occasionally more, but second and seven. Again, twins to both sides. Brandon with the straight run. He's going to take it to the right side. Cuts it upfield. Gets hit at the 45. Across the 45. He'll mark him at the 46. Mm. It'll be third and three. Yeah. So Clayton on the tackle for the uh, Crusaders to stop him. Like Al said, threes are wild. Third quarter, <laughs> third and three to go. <laughs> no doubt. Mm. The threes up there in the scoreboard. Yeah. And there'd be these threes up there too, but they don't have them on this scoreboard. There's three timeouts each. <laughs> <laughs> threes are wild. Well, yeah. Yeah, so. Ten seconds left on the play clock. Chargers spread it out. Brazils will man the backfield. Brandon, back to pass. Brings it down, he tucks it, and he's going to run it, and he's got the first down up across the 50-yard line to the Crusader 49. Brandon Brazell, just like he did a couple games ago, he turned his hips with that quarterback draw. I don't know if that was designed or if he saw something, but he picks. He needed three, he picks up four. I think it was a broken play out. He had no one to check down to, and he says, you know what, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to fake like I'm going to throw it, I'm going to turn my hip and go. And sure enough, first down Chargers on the Crusader side of the field. That's been a while since they've been down there. Yeah. This drive started on their own 39, yard, what, 39? Yeah. Yeah, 39-yard 39 39 yard line. line. Yep. See if we can't get a 61-yard drive here. Mm. Brandon, to pass again, he's going to fling it out. Garner tries to check it back up. He definitely, he someone had, put a mitt on it. He had Lindsey and uh, Marshall flag, with him. I mean, there is a late flag on the play. So see what happens here with her in a call. Oh, yeah, I do see a flag out there, yeah. Unsportsmanlike conduct, Bishop Kahneman. That's going to hurt. That'll move the ball to the Canavan 39-yard line, first and 10 for the Chargers. They called that on uh, their great defensive end, Devon Taylor. Oh, did they? Yeah, uh, he, they take him out of the game for a minute just to cool down. Yeah, I was going to say 39, that's only 10 yards. Yeah, now it goes to the 34, that's where it is. Yep. That's a 15-yard penalty. 
First and 10 for the Chargers. Crusader 34 yard line. 413 on the clock. And I I was oh that's an incomplete pass. I was gonna say the the clock should start because that but it's not because that was an incomplete pass. Mm -hmm. Trips to the near side for the Chargers. Garnered alone wide out on the far side. Brandon gets a high snap. Brady picks it up off the ground and keeps going with it. What a play there by the Brazels. <laughs> he said, okay, brother, I got you. So Haas takes the ball and uh, finds it and says, okay, make something out of nothing. Yeah, gets, gets a yard out of that ball that hit the turf and bounced right back into Haas's hands. And Brady picks up a yard. It'll be second and nine. You know, that chemistry with the brothers, you know, he knows what the other <laughs> one's doing. He says, okay, I got you, brother. So that's what happened. Officials time out. Here, Broff coming off with a little hitch in his giddy up here. And yeah. Aaron Natopsky looking at him, and the officials walking him over. And I don't know if he's pointing to his shoulders. Well, then comes Ronnie Smith, the junior, the 5'9". Linebacker oh, for I your think, Chargers. Oh, it looks like looks like Damari has an equipment issue. Look, they're looking at his helmet. Yeah. Uh, well, Sago hands Damari his helmet. Says, "Here, take mine, bro." <laughs> that was pretty. <laughs> Seriously, cool. he just did. So Damari's got to sit out for one play here, and he's got he's got. Uh, well, Sago's here's uh, Brandon Brazell in all kinds of trouble, and he's going to run forward and get back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and 10 from the 34-yard line, and that was a, a play that had no continuity at all. Yeah, you had like five Crusaders on the tackle, and Brandon had nowhere to go. And it back in comes Broff. Uh, he just uh, says, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go back in. That doesn't matter to me. Okay, my helmet says I'm 75, but I'm, I'm actually 52. Exactly right. <laughs> Play like Mean Joe Green, these brother. Are, these new old helmets, they have the old logo on one side and their, their number on the other. Yeah. So, Trips to the near side for the Chargers. Third and 10 from the 34 of Kahneman. Brazell back to pass. He's got some time. He's going to fling it in the air. Garner can't get it. Good coverage there around the five-yard line by the Crusaders. As Jay John Marshall was with that the, who it was? Yeah, with the deflection. Again, I couldn't. Oh, yeah, because there's yeah. A cross on the near side. I couldn't tell if that was a two or a seven. Yeah. And it looks like he's a little hurt there for yeah, a minute. Yeah, it looks like he came down awkwardly. Yep. Fourth and 10 for the Chargers at the 34. You got to figure they're going to keep the offense on the field here. Oh, they're going to have to. 235 on the scoreboard clock here in the third. See the dots underneath the teams there on the on the ticker. That indicates how many timeouts the teams have. So both teams with the full complement at this point. Fourth and ten from the 34. How many times in the last couple weeks we've seen the Chargers come up with some big third and fourth down plays? Mm. Brazil rolls to the far side, looking, flips it out, and out of bounds was Garner being covered out there. It looked like Lindsay. Yeah, It'll I be, think you're right. You know, complete turnover on downs, first and 10 for Bishop Kahneman at their own 34-yard line. Yeah, so turnover on downs. Damari Broff we were talking about. He's had the offer from Winchester. course with the Brazels from St. Vincent so far that's their each one of their first offers so hopefully more will come in for them I'm sure they will little shovel over here to Carter he's up across the 45 right oh we got a flag on the play yeah so it's a holding call it is with the uh, Crusaders I kind of saw that when he was going upfield but uh, Gardner on the tackle, nevertheless, if it if it was going to keep rolling. That would have been a fir enough for a first down, but yep. it, as it is, that'll back him up. That'll back him up to the 
the 27-yard line. Yep. So it'll be first down and about 17. There's Carter hitting the backfield. He's going to lose a yard back to the – they're, they're going to give him forward progress to the 27. No, no, the other side judge is saying the 31. No, 30, 32. It's called or, or 27, rather. Call Mr. Matlock's number tonight. Yep. And, uh, again, Vitorino right there to help Mr. Matlock. And uh, Vitorino is playing out of his mind. Second and 17 from the 30, 27. I keep wanting to say the 32. Yeah. 27. Line to gain is the 44. Trips to the far side. Here come the Chargers showing blitz. Here they come. Lashevsky back to pass. He's going to fling it down the field. And this one's going to be caught on the run, and he's gone. That is Marshall. Yeah. And uh, 72 yards. 72 yards is 73 right. 73 yards. 72 or 73 yards from Lashevsky to Marshall. To open it up 34 7 with the. Uh, Extra point coming up for Shorthouse here in a second. And let me tell you, he was wide open in the middle. That was a perfect, uh, it was like a, a post pattern. He yeah. come, come off the edge and then he was headed right down to the middle of the field. And I got to say, that was a perfect pass from Oshevsky right into the arms. And then as soon as he caught it, he turned the Jets on and there was nobody going to catch him. Yeah, Marshall just broke it loose. Short house. This one Ooh. is going to be partially blocked. It's no good. So with 125 to go here in the third quarter, 34-7. Uh, L, what I what I saw there was they're just going to try to open up the game. They want that mercy rule to run, and there's no question that's what they're trying to accomplish. Well, they need to hold the Chargers here and get one more score. And yeah, they, got they do. It, yep. Yep. Hey, you want more information on Olsh Chargers for rosters, stories, and more? Visit www.olshathletics.org. And we want to send out special thanks to our website sponsor, Covenant Financial Advisors. Yeah, so far on the night tonight, uh, Oshesky, 49-yard touchdown, a 63-yard touchdown, and this one a 72-yard touchdown. And uh, he just put them up in bunches. Chargers need to get something going here. They got, of course, Garner. You got to be careful. He's he's playing up now, and you got to watch out that they don't try to kick it over his head. Garner's going to go over to the far side. Here we go. They're switching. Ellis is going to come to the middle and be go back. It'll be Schultz on the near side. Garner on the far side are the deep guys, and in the middle is Talon Ellis. They're going to kick this one deep. Ellis is going to go track it down, pick it up at the five-yard line. Avoids one tackler, avoids the second one across the 10. He gets hit about the 12. And oh. here comes some big hits there. First and 10 for the Chargers, about the 12 or 13-yard line, first and 10. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. Well, like it was piling on, but what are you going to do? It's 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 a the game. Yep. But uh, Talon Ellis, you know, he picked the ball up. I thought, okay, maybe he's just going to kneel down there. But he took off. He took a chance. First and ten for the Chargers. Trail by 27 points. Here in the third, 115 on the scoreboard clock. Chargers spread the field all the way across. Twins did both sides. It's a new quarterback. This is Garner. Takes the snap. Hand it off to Brazell. He's hit in the backfield. It'll be tackled at the nine. It's a loss of three. It'll be second down and 13. Yeah, and why not? You know, see, some, just try something a little different. Yep, little wildcat. Little wildcat is right. Brady Brazell comes and gets to play. Yeah. 
37 seconds in a rolling clock here in the third. Second down, 13 for the Chargers. Is that Brandon or Brady in taking the snap? That's Brandon. Yeah. Straight run to the near side. He's got the corner across the 10. He breaks a tackle. He's across the 20. The, the 25, he's brought down at the 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Chargers. What a run by Brandon Burzell. Nice run by, by uh, Brandon. And, uh, you know, he said, no quit. You know, I know it's 34-7, but I want to still play this game <laughs> in front of my family and fans. The last home game. Yes, it is. What a run there. He's the last couple weeks, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. You know, well, last week, we forgot to mention the Vela game. He had 128 yards rushing, Brandon Brazell. So he can run the ball. Yeah, he can. Him and his brother both. Yeah, and, and Brady can as well. Yeah, and uh, seemed like they're, they're some of their big – I know there were some that, between the tackles that they broke for, for big ones, but they had a – seemed like to me, in my m memory – their big ones came when they went around tackle. Yeah, yeah, just, you're right. Just like that one there. Yeah, you're right. I do remember that now you said that. So, and you wouldn't think of them as like going around tackle to get those big yards. You think of them up the middle guys, but, yeah. but I'll tell you what, they, they're deceiving at their speed and their strength. You can't, you can't arm tackle these guys. Well, like Coach said, you know, in the interview you had with him this afternoon, he said, you know, you put these guys anywhere, they're going to be successful no matter where you put them. And yeah. he's 100% right. They played everywhere. Chargers and the Raiders next week for the season finale. Regular season, Chargers still with the hopes of getting into the playoffs. The way this one's going, they're going to desperately need to defeat the Raiders next week. So what are you going to do, ride your skateboard? That's that close. Yeah, it's uh, right over the hill from you through the woods. Yeah, if I get a ladder on my on my roof I might be able to call the game from my roof I think you could <laughs> well that's why you call it the rooftop robbery <laughs> and like Matt Vargo says a five minute robbery five minute robbery yeah so yeah it's going to be that's going to be a game you know th these Chargers don't quit um, they're going to go down with everything they got here we go there's Matt and we just talked about him as Matt likes to say let's play a fourth first and ten for the Chargers from their 27-yard line. And quickly, we're going to have a timeout called by the Chargers, and that's not what you wanted to do right there. No. You can't be using your timeouts that early Come, in the well, quarter. Coming out of the quarter. Yeah. I don't know if he saw something uh, he didn't like. or. I think I think Coach Millicer's not happy with what just happened. Uh-oh, here comes Isaiah Schultz. Maybe he's going to call him in. As he said, they've been... They've been uh, nursing his ankle, and uh, he hasn't seen many snaps on the offensive side of the ball, and he, he did play like a game and a half at quarterback, and he can fling the ball. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought there was 10 in the huddle. That's what he called timeout. Uh, yeah. Who's, who's on the sidelines? I don't know, but I could have swore I saw 10 in the huddle. I could be wrong. I'm just, that's what I looked like, I, and that's why he called timeout. I don't, I don't see any of the guys on the sideline. Well, if Schultz come in, no one else come out, right? That'd been 10, and he made 11. Yeah. Uh, that's what I saw, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, Schultz is going to come in as a tight end. It is Brazil in an empty set. And he's going to run it up the middle, and he's going to get hit and come down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be second down 10 for the Chargers. Yeah, big number 13, Taylor. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's all beast. over the place. He is a beast. Oh, only a sophomore. I know. Uh, like I said, he, he got some some talent, that man. I, I want to say man because, you he's, know, he's only 15 years old, but he's, he's a man. He's 6'2", 200, listed 6'2", 220 pounds. When Pitt and Penn State call you on your freshman year, you got something going on. That should be a game tomorrow, huh? Oh, Ohio State and Penn State. Yeah. Talk to Bobby. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Pelko, a couple days ago, they're fired up after they 63 slaughter and over UMass. They're going up to uh, Columbus yeah, well, tomorrow. UMass and uh, Buckeyes are two different teams. Oh, of course they are. <laughs> but I think they're going to be He's all right. Garner in motion. He takes the, the handoff on the sweep, cuts it back up the middle, up to the 30-yard line, no further. It'll be third down and seven for the chargers from the 30-yard line and going back to that did you hear about michigan 
stealing signals. Stealing signals. Oh my, what a mess. But they let they let that coach go. Yeah, they did. So. So big blue. Number two in the country. I, I used to watch that game back when I was in high school, that Michigan Ohio State game, and and you had everybody had their favorites. I wanted both those teams to lose. I never liked either one the of them. <laughs> I got you. The Big Ten got some big power, man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Garner again. They fake it to him, and this time Brazil Tim brings it back the other way. And the Crusaders are waiting for him at the 29-yard line, loss of one. It'll be fourth and eight with the loss of one for the Chargers. Yes, sir. And the other Lindsay on the tackle, Jermel Lindsay, Jalen's brother in. Boy, there's a lot of limping coming off that field, boys. Yeah. Porter Shipley in there from special teams. Patrick Altmar stands back on his 17 yard line, awaits the snap, who are punted away, crosses deep. Here comes the rush, and there's a flag. Mm. Is this procedure? It is. It so is. back the Chargers up five. I wasn't sure if they timed it and got into the neutral zone before the snapper. If the Chargers moved, and it was the Chargers moving. So that'll back him up. Five yard penalty, back him up to the 24 yard line. So it'll be fourth and 13 for the Chargers. From the 24. Altmaier awaits the snap from Brazil. Snap back. Good job there by Altmar to get it away. Gets a charger roll, cross the 50 yard line. Everybody walks away and it'll settle down at the Crusader 44. And that's where they will start the ball with 8.58 left here in the game. Looks like there's gonna be a mess, but it come out to be okay with that roll. Um, he has no time to punt right now. Well, I mean, he's new at the kicking for the Chargers. We were mentioned talking about that earlier. And I think the one thing that he needs to work on and no fault of his, he just never had to do it before, is the urgency. He's like back there taking his time. And Timing. He, yeah, and like when, if, like that one there was a low snap and he picked it up and kind of like nonchalantly and when the high snaps, he kind of like readjusts himself. He don't have time to do that. You gotta get the ball and get it in the air. So, and yeah. that's 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 the, the one thing and he's new at punting, so. Yeah, I gotta give it to him, man. He does a great job. Oh yeah. From the 44, First and 10 for the Crusaders. Shefke will hand it off. Hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward. Carter pick up two to the 46 yard line. It'll be second and eight. Isaiah Schultz on the tackle well right there. The stopping. Yeah, I, I see Joe limping around on the sideline, Don, here, Marty. Yeah, there's a lot of her chargers, Broff. He's hurt. And they still still going strong. They yeah. really are. I mean, they got a lot of heart on his team. Snap back. Oshesky keeps it himself. He gets stood up right at the line of scrimmage. I don't, they may give him the line of scrimmage. No gain. It'll be third down and eight from the 41. Oshesky tried to cut it upfield, and he got popped by somebody. That was Brady Brazil. Was it? Yeah, that was Haas. He says, uh-uh. <laughs> he went flying in there. You saw, you saw Shevsky, like when you cut up field, you always drop your shoulder. And I saw his head and shoulders come flying back up. <laughs> yeah, he did. He stood him, you call him standing him straight up. That's exactly what the Haas did. So it's third and eight from the 46 yard line. Approaching seven and a half on a rolling clock left in this one. Shevsky has Carter, switches him from his right side to his left. In the backfield, he'll send Marshall in motion. He flips around him. Mashevsky looking downfield, he's gonna fling it. And he's got his man, it's cross up ahead for a first down at the Charger 42 yard line, first and 10. Yeah, a little 20 yard pass downfield, or actually 18 yards down there to cross. And uh, Gardner was right there to throw him out of bounds, though. 
First and 10 from the Charger 42. Clock is momentarily stopped. Oh, he went out of bounds. He That's did go out of bounds, yeah. yeah. High formation under center. They'll hand it off. It's Carter again across the 40, trying to get to the 35. They'll stop him at the 36. Yep. It'll so be second and four after that six yard gain. Yeah, no, I think he just got, they just want to turn the clock. They yeah. want to run the ball. I think they gave up throwing to Don Field. Well, well, you know what I'm saying. Um, their big thing is, I think, just keep the ball. I, yeah, yeah. If I, if I'm, if I'm Canavan right now, I'm just run the clock out, and if I can score on the ground, great. Yeah. Again, everyone said, oh, 48 nothing. Yeah. No, I mean. Oh, sure, in trouble tonight. Yeah, it says 34-7, but it wasn't that easy. I, yeah. Canavan know they knows they've been in a game. A couple of splash plays for them. Olszewski back to pass again. He's going to fling this one. There we go. That's why we're in the bench. or not on the bench calling the game, and it's Marshall with yeah. the 36-yard uh, pass. 36-yard pass, that is the cross. And, uh, boy, just like that, El, you, you, you called it. You know, you said, hey, they're not going to give that up. But 40 to 7, 6.23 to go. Well, it's, if they get the extra point, it's a 34-point lead, so it's still not running clock. No, it's not. 100% <laughs> right. Shorthouse will blast this one through. That was probably his best point after attempt of the night. Every, all, the, all the other ones that went through shaky. were on drive. Yeah, they were the, shaky. Hey, they all count the same. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, all the last three passes, uh, 63, 72, and that one 36 yards to the house, making a 41-7. Yeah, you gotta, sometimes you just got to tip your hat and say, Hey, oh, you got to listen. Yeah. We we knew this coming in. Yeah, it was David versus Goliath. You know they outnumber us two to one. Um, and their skill players outnumber us two to one. And and we have a lot of hurt. <laughs> because team. a lot of our yeah. lot of our our number ones are are hurt on crutches and yeah. wheelchairs and. Like I said, you're missing a good concussion protocol. And yeah, five of your starters. I mean, I mean, put that in perspective. They're still hanging around. Again, they beat Crowington last week, 62 to nothing, and just, like, destroyed them. And uh, I'm sorry. I know it says 41-7, but they're not really destroying us. No. It, like I said, it's the splash plays yeah, that the have splash killed the Chargers. Is right. So the Chargers all line up at the 18-yard line, 19-yard line now, and challenge them, and he's going to squib this one. Chargers fall on it. Man, Brady Brazell. It's like nobody really wanted to dive on it. Brady Brazell finally comes over and picks it up at the 43-yard line, first and 10 for the Chargers. These hard-nosed uh, McKees Rock kids just <laughs> says, you know what, I'm still in this game and remember that. There's still time on the clock. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened, and I'm being truthful when I say this. I'm sure they got together today. Think about this. You're a twin. You're a senior. You've got your brother on the field with you. What do you think you're going to do? No quit, right? Right. You better not give up. I'm sure they're telling each other it's, that. It's, it's, it's like um, – Oh, uh, what's the uh, what's the Jim Carrey movie? Um, can't think of it, but it's it's uh, he says you got like one in a million chance of getting with the girl, and he goes, so you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> 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 I forgot the name of the movie, but you're right. Yeah, but yeah, I mean their their <laughs> so hearts are in it. So the Chargers are saying right now, saying you're saying there's a chance. Trips to the far side, 619 on the clock. Chargers, Brandon Brazell, little delay, trying to get the line of scrimmage. He's not going to get there. He's going to lose a couple. They're going to give him forward progress to the 41. He'll lose two. It'll be second and 12. And I see Luke Venerino limping again. He would just seem like he was healing up at the Vela game, and he's limping. He seems like every game, late in the game, I, get, I think it just wears Maybe right it does. now. And, and – I think the, the tape starts to loosen up a little bit. Yeah, you that's know, a good you, point, though. Yeah. Been there, done that. Mm. Not not for football, for hockey. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You just retired the other day. No, for, I did. Yeah. I, I finally got rid of the equipment. Wow. And I, was, I was actually 
Kim looked at me and she says, "Are you okay?" And I was like a tear running down my f face. And I was like, "It's gone, hon." <laughs> I can believe it. <laughs> There's a run by Brazil. He gets to the 40. He's going to lose the yard back to the 40. Right now, the Crusaders are making you fight for every inch of that field. Yeah, and the uh, Chargers are saying they're not going away. No, they're going to come, still come at you. Yeah, they had the full house backfield there, Tonery in the backfield with the Brazels. From the 40, it's third and 13. Just under five minutes to go. The clock is ticking away. Again, I want to thank Bobby Brazell for running the camera. I've been watching here on the monitor. He's doing a great job. Yeah, he's into it. Go rock, right? Yep. Here's Brandon through the line, up close to the 50-yard line. He'll mark him at the 49 of the Chargers. It'll be fourth down, but you figure the Chargers are going to keep the offense on the field here to make it fourth and about four. Oh, you should have put a 36 on his chest. He looked like a drone bet is coming up, up through <laughs> he here. Did, he, he did. He really did. The way, that's how he <laughs> ran, just like that. You know, no no quit and just, just hitting the holes. I don't know. I don't know the, the hole numbers, that, you know, the uh, between the players, but he was right between the guard and the tackle there, and just they opened up the hole, and Brandon says, thank you very much. Milk truck delivering. Yep. Now fours are wild. Look at the scoreboard. <laughs> fours are wild, yeah. yeah. 350 to go. The clock rolls. Three in the backfield. Tonery is one of them. Oh, drop the ball. And the church and, and, the, and Crusaders. the Crusaders have it. Yes, they do. That'll just about do it. Yeah, I mean, it, it happens. So, Miss Q's once again bites the Chargers in the butt, but, yep. uh, you know, what are you going to do? 3.42 left in this one at the 47-yard line of the Chargers. And let's, here's the big question. What do the Crusaders do? Of course, they're not going to put their subs in. No. Every starter still on the team. Every on the, on starter still, still out, out there. there. Yep. Shevsky will be under center in the I formation. Two in the backfield. Carter will dot the I. He goes in motion. First man through. And push forward for about four or five yards. I think that was. Actually, that was Taylor. That was uh, Davion Taylor. Is that 13? Yeah, it was. And they, they're trying to him out on the offense a little bit. Yeah, that was 13. Yeah, it was. The big defensive end. Second and five from the 42-yard line. Well, the Crusaders come in averaging 29, 30 points a game. There's a handoff. to uh, the other Lindsay. To the other Lindsay. He picks up one to the 41 yard line. It'll be third down and four. Yep. And it's obvious now they just want to start running the clock out. Go well, we said that last yeah, time. We he threw did. a 36 yard pass. Well, <laughs> I, I'm not Coach Johnson, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to be nice. Yeah, well. When it's 41 7, normally I'd be putting my. Second team in. Right, but get them some PT. Get some, some playing time. You yep. never know. Yep. Next man up. That's not his mentality. That's not the way he thinks. No. I formation for Oshevsky. He's going to pitch it back. It's Carter trying to get the corner. No, it's not Carter. That's actually Lindsay. It's actually Lindsay again. Yep. He's up close. He's going to be right at the sticks. Let's see where they mark it. It's going to be very close. I think he's going. they're going to give him the first down. Yeah. I mean, he, he's right there. No, they're saying fourth down and inches. Okay. Yep, because the ball is on the the one side of the hash mark and the, the sticks are on the other side of it. So Yeah, you get about, about about the length of the football. Yeah, you got about three plays left and that'll be it. But 
Yeah, I'm down to a minute and a half. Yeah, let's see if they get the first down here if they go into the victory formation. It's another I formation. Oshevsky, we taking himself, they're going to pass it. <laughs> On the outside, they got the first down. Breaks one tackle. And out of bounds he goes. Are they going to say he's out of bounds? Yeah. Well, I'm going to say it. No, that, was, no. that was Edwards with the catch. I'm going to say it. I don't get paid for it, but no class. I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't throw the ball with 41 to 7 with right. a minute to go. Right. Next. I'm sorry. Now they go in victory formation. Forty-two seconds, they'll let the clock run down. There's another ten seconds left on the play clock. He'll take the knee. And that'll do it. They won't have to snap it again. Oh wait. Canavan's walking off the field, and that'll do it. Well, another day at the office, but um, as, as you see there at the end, the Crusaders, you know, took over from mistakes, Al. Oh, yeah. And, you know, that's exactly what happened here tonight. So. Yeah, the, uh, again, we said it all along. Sometimes you just got to tip your hat. Crusaders were the better team, and uh, it's what most people expected, and Kind of like I did, too, coming into this. But uh, sometimes you never know. That's why you play the game, Marty. Yeah, uh, it, like you said, any given Friday, oh, you just never know what's going to happen. He held it close to the vest. You know, end of the first quarter with 14-7. I said, hey, they're hanging yeah. around, you know. Yep. Keep hanging around. And, unfortunately, there goes that block punt. That, yep. that turned the tide right there. That really was. And then it was 21-7. He never looked back. Right. That was the, that was the turn to turn the table. 41 unanswered points. And uh, they just went on to victory. But, again, you know, when when you're in the play, when you know this team's in the playoffs, you need to play your second string and uh, get them a little bit of, uh, you know, time. But that's just me. I like to be sometimes feisty, you know. I, I don't like to see that, you know. Right. So. All right. Uh, we'll step aside, get our thoughts together. We'll come back and put a bow on this one. Chargers fall to the Crusaders. The record goes to 3-3 three and three in the section. And uh, they go to... Uh, Four and five. Four and five overall. So uh, Crusaders go on. They go to uh, five and one in section and six and one overall. Yes, so uh, they'll stay in second place to the um, Rangers of uh, Fort Cherry. But we'll, we'll be right back after these important messages. Don't go away. I personally love the family environment of Ocean. That's what I saw from my first day coming in as a freshman. Everybody was kind and helpful. All the teachers and all the students, we all treat each other like family. So it's it's more like a homey type feel. You get to know everyone who goes here. It's like a community. Everyone's together and we're all just like a family. I think I've grown more religious through the teachings and understanding the religion better. With the amazing theology teachers and getting the chance to go to church every week, it's definitely expanded my faith. Different things like Cairo retreat or uh, being able to come to confession or go to adoration here in the chapel every day gives you really a good opportunity to connect with God and express their faith and not feel shy about it. The teachers are incredible. They make you feel like one of their own kids. I feel comfortable going to them at any time for whatever the need be, and I know they always have my back to help me. They get to know you personally and get to help you in different ways. They're not just worried about your grades, they're worried about how your feelings are. They care about you more. Ors is a place where you can get involved in a bunch of different things. It sets you up for college. It's a school full of many opportunities that'll help you grow, not just spiritually, but also just as a person in general. Olsh is one big family. Everybody knows everybody. Olsh is challenging adventure and it really just is an amazing experience.
Welcome back to Moon Tiger Stadium, Old Sports Network's presentation of Charger football. I'm Al Esch alongside Marty Armstrong. Glad you could join us. Um, not a good night for the ch football team as they fall to the Crusaders. Uh, Bishop Canman, 41 to 7, as you see the score there. And um, it was, uh, you said it earlier, Marty, it was a close game in the first half. And then that block punt was really what turned the corner, uh, turned the tide. And then the Crusaders never looked back. Um, at the Chargers. They scored 41 unanswered points after the Chargers opened up the scoring tonight with the uh, one-yard plunge by Brazil, yeah. and then um, it was it was all Crusaders. Yeah, it was all Shesky. Uh, he just started airing the ball out, you know, um, three or four pass, touchdown passes yeah. tonight. And um, But, you know, again, I give Chargers a lot of credit, a lot of hurt people. Yeah. Um, you know, if you really knew – what was going on behind closed doors? Yeah. They have a lot of hurt key players, and for forty-one to seven, yeah, that's a big score. But again, this is a classic David Goliath tonight, and um, I just, I, I, I tip my hat again to the coach and uh, to all the old players. L, um, he never gave up, even though it was forty-one-seven. Um, so, on to Cornell next week to see yeah. what we can do. Uh, I just got a little update from a family member. It was 21 nothing Pakistan in the third quarter over Avella, so that don't look good. No. Um, so, with that said, again, you miss all these key players, though. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it's going to bite you, but they held in yeah. all year long to be in the hunt. Yeah, it's it's looking more like uh, the Chargers not going to make the playoffs for the first time, and I was going to look, and I forgot. I want to say six or fifth, seven years. Fifth since 2015. 15, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, you never know. They're not going to quit. They're not going to die. They got one more, one more game. It's a road game, uh, officially a road game, um, over at Cornell. So come on out next week, and uh, cheer on the Chargers, and and uh, hopefully they can end their season with a victory, and send these seniors away on a good note. That would probably put the Cornell Raiders in a tough situation if yeah. they would beat them. I mean, they really would. Yeah, because yeah, because right now Cornell is sitting in the third spot, and if if uh, we beat them and and uh, Burgettstown wins, Burgettstown moves course, up. Of course, Bur course is going to be playing uh, Fort, Fort Cherry. Cherry yeah. So, yeah. But uh, yeah. but anyway, um, yeah, tough tough game, and and it's like we said it all season, and I'll say one more time, um, and you you touched on it too, Marty. A lot of people will look at the Chargers record and what they've been doing and saying, "Wow, I thought they were better than that." They are. Um, but injuries will bring down, you know, the, the biggest Goliath. And oh, yeah. um, and coach, coach and I have been talking, and I would match a healthy Charger team at the beginning of the season uh, against anybody on their their schedule, and and with a chance of, of coming away with victories in any one of those games. But uh, that's not what happened, and uh, and it is what it is. I mean, if other teams had that same such scenario. Would the Chargers le ease up on them? No. They're out there to win the game. So, Look, these scheduled people are no dummies. They looked at the beginning of the season and said, look at this right here on the schedule, Bishop Canavan versus Olsh. That's going to be another classic. Yeah. So they put that on the schedule. They're going to televise that game with Matt Fargo, you know, behind the mic. But, unfortunately, the the injury bug hit us, and you have nowhere to go, right? right. But in comes Brady Brazell to save the day, <laughs> really. And, um, you know. Kid's not built for a quarterback. Come on. We all know that. But the kid's like Rudy. He has heart, you know, just yeah. like his brother. Rudy. And like half the team. Look at look how many times I've watched Broth limp off the field tonight in Hatherley. And they're like, you know what? I'm going back in. I don't care. You know, it's our last home game. So yep. hats off to these cho Chargers. Going down to uh, Cornell. Look, tomorrow's another day. You know, that's why you play week to week. Yep. And you have a short-term memory. And – plans are going down to beat the, the Raiders and knock them out of playoff contention. Here's, here's, I'm trying to put a positive spin on this. Um, you look at the score, it's 41 to 7, Canavan over the Chargers. Look at last year's score. Yeah. Chargers improved over last year. Last year they lost 40 to nothing. Yeah. So the Chargers put a score on the board against the Canavan team. It's just a strong, if not stronger than last year. Oh, yeah. And um, they did it with like you said, five, six of their starters not in the lineup. So yeah. um, that, uh, that tells me that, that this Charger team, it's 
Heart means a lot, and you said it. Um, the Chargers have tons of it. So uh, congratulations. Uh, is what's what's the old line? As long as uh, um, we might be behind on the scoreboard at the end of the game, but in my book, we cannot lose. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's her mentality because we talked to Rizel's Diner today. You know, before pregame, I'll let you go here in a minute. But they all said we all had all three brothers down there today talking to them. Mm -hmm. And you know exactly what I, I heard. They said, you know what, we're, we're going to this game saying, okay, we're going we're gonna to hang around. It's the last home game together, me and my brother. Bobby's up here. You know, he, he, he left us here in, what, 2018, 19, whatever it was. But with that said, uh, on to bigger and better things. We're going down to Cornell next week to beat the spoilers. That's their playoff game yeah, next week. Right. Let's beat the spoilers. Let's, let's say, okay, world, here we are. We're still in the <laughs> thick of things. Let's knock off Cornell. And, and make them hurt a little bit going into the, pl into the playoffs. So. All right, on behalf of everybody here at Old Sports Network, I'm Al saying uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Marty, thanks for coming by again, and we'll see you again next week. I um, want to thank uh, Coach Mack for making all this possible. And Christian, hope things are going well. We hope to see you. Uh, if not, um, basketball's coming up. Yes. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, keep an eye on the uh, website for when basketball games. I was talking to Coach Rod and Coach Rick uh, the other, this week and, and uh, get, trying to get their final um, schedule set up. It looks like the boys are going to open up again down in Brownsville in that tournament. That was They were nice to us down there, so we may be opening up down there. i got to talk to Don Eckerly and see what's going on with the girls. But uh, should be exciting basketball season this year. we got some – couple new players, a couple uh, returning players. It should be fun, and they should be competitive. But uh, on behalf of it, anyway, back to this one. Uh, thanks for everybody for watching. Uh, I want to thank uh, Bobby Brazell for running the camera and stepping in. He always does a great job. Him and Ryan Parker would normally do it, do it but he was run, running the concession stand tonight. But um, thanks for everybody. The Chargers lose to the Bishop Canavan Crusaders by a score of 41-7. to seven. And they go on to, the Chargers go on next week, as we said, to play the Cornell Raiders at uh, Frank Letelli, Let, Letary Field Stadium uh, over on uh, Maple Avenue. The S Frank, as Ma we call it. The Frank. The Frank. So we'll be live from uh, the Frank next week, 7 o'clock on Friday night. It's one more Friday night lights, unless the Chargers can uh, – find a way into the playoffs. Yeah. On behalf of everybody here, I'm Al Lesh saying thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you next time right here on the Old Sports Network.